and we are kicking off another wonderful day at the Ultimate Land, Water, and RV Show. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Hey. Let me tell you what, that outdoor showdown really kind of took some people for a loop last night, didn't it? <laughs> because they're all on Matt's side and we're over here by ourselves. I mean, come on. Yeah, look, look, hey, look, you got 2,000 points. You yeah. guys got 2,000 points. Yeah. Uh, two traveling dogs got 2,000 points. Soulful RV. Coming back. Coming back. We're going to come You're back. You're coming back. Well, well you know, I think you are coming back because, Tia, you got Chef Keith and today's competition is the ultimate outdoor cook-off right. where you guys are going to be making breakfast for Ian Baker who's going to be judging today. Are you excited about that? I'm super excited. And you know what else we got today? We're going to be introducing Electric World. We're going to be introducing oh, yeah. a behind-the-scenes look at the Napalo boat and how it's made. The absolute best entry-level pontoon boat you're ever going to find. We got Ian's going to be giving us an introduction to motorhomes. So if you've been wondering what it's like to have a motorhome, what type of motorhome to go check out, which one's going to be right for the family, which one's right for the adventurous couples, Ian's going to have it today. And I want to get a quick word from everybody about so far the ultimate land, water, and RV show. Do you have a favorite thing that has stood out so far? Soulful RV family. Tia, anything you like so far? We've had such a blast. Um, there's so many things that have come to light. I, I don't know if... I don't know if I can pick one thing. You have uh, just being here with all these people. Yeah, it's great. Our, our kids have gotten a chance to get outside. Uh, just like I said, a beautiful campground. Yes. And you know, I'm competitive, so I love competition. <laughs> yes, yes. You said cooking and grilling. Oh, I'm ready. Like I always say, Nelly, it's on. Like what? Pot of neck bones. It's on like <laughs> pot of neck bones today with that ultimate camping cookout. Now. Follow your detour. Anything that stood out for you guys as far as, you know, something that you enjoyed or, or maybe something that you learned? I got to tell you, I really enjoy the Nepal boat. We got to go out, spend a little time on the water, and it's a beautiful lake back there. It was an excellent time. So much fun. Really, really like that part. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. And then Jurgis, what do you guys think? What's yes, all the above. I agree. And even just in between, like, taking the boat out and actually testing it out ourselves. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, love it. And hanging out with everybody, too. That's yeah. been a favorite of mine. I thought for sure it would be winning a couple of competitions. Well, I, did, I knew Nellie was going to say that because she's just been reminding everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to rub it in, huh? <laughs> I'm really excited about something that's to come because I'm excited about Electric World. I'm excited about the behind the scenes to the Nepalo. I'm really excited about our service and maintenance expert panel that's coming up later today. But more importantly than that, boondocking is something all of y'all have done. And my buddy Ian Baker is going to show you how to do it right now. <laughs> hey, guys, you see my ball? Titleist number three? <laughs> yeah, bro. One oh rolled God. through here a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Who took it? <laughs> Did he get, it? he get my ball? It was. <laughs> Here's the stool, man. Thank I you, guys. You know, I didn't strategically What's have that uh, sitting there for you. No, not at like all. No. Was it wasn't magic. Wasn't movie it's magic. It's a magic stool. Hey, it's buddy, a magic mind stool. if I pull up right next to you? <laughs> yeah, he might. <laughs> ah, break up my man. <laughs> What's going on, IB? Oh, you know, just. Out there golfing, looking for a ball. I don't know where it went. <laughs> You're golfing? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I thought we were boondocking. Oh, all right. Fair Did enough. we boondock on a golf course? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit about boondocking. I know awesome. I know you guys uh, do quite a bit of it, right? We do. And just I guess kind of tell me what is it that you love about boondocking? What is it that kind of got you started? You know, for us, it was trying to get an authentic camping experience you know the one okay. that you had as a kid yeah. out in nature you yeah know? and boondocking really is just camping without hookups you know no yeah. water no yeah. sewer no electric yep you know so it's dry camping yeah. but originally again it was just trying to get that same uh experience and we were doing it you know for fun yep. uh, but as the years have went by and more and more people are RVing. Mm -hmm. now it's become more of a necessity because yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> because we can't get reservations a lot of times okay so you know we'll pop on you know uh, a site uh, find uh, some boondocking sites close to us yep and you know we just jump yeah well and, and it's funny you say boondocking sites right because i think so many people have this illusion that boondocking right like you're out in the boonies right, right like yeah. out in the middle of nowhere and that's, yeah, yeah. that's not necessarily the case like you said sometimes you can be at a beautiful site like this one awesome you, you just don't have on the course. golf course yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no you know but you're right because uh, a lot of them are developed campsites yep you know more and more rv parks as well because they see 
how many people want to come in yep. and they're not going to be able to develop more campsites. Right. So what they do is they put in areas, um, as Digby is attesting to, <laughs> they'll put in more areas for uh, dry camping. Yep. Yeah. So if you can't get a site in the regular park, they've got an area for you to, to go out there and boot And sometimes they even have fire pits set up. Oh, we've, okay. we've been to okay. some where they have chopped really? wood ready for you. Chopped wood. Wow. They're really hospitable if you find the right one. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and uh, man, some of the nicest people are out there boondocking, you know. Oh, yeah. People think that you know, boondockers are people that have, you know, converted a 1969 Grand Torino and threw a garden shed on it, and they're parked <laughs> out there li living that, in the hills. Though. No, that's pretty nice. There's nothing know. wrong with that no, at I all. I did that one time. But no, I, I mean, that's what they think of when they think about people that boondock. But sure. now you've got people, you know, from everything from, you know, a small towable all the way up to half a million dollar Oh, you absolutely. know, diesel pushers that yeah. are going dry camping. And it, it's just awesome to talk to them. Well, and, and kind of like we talk about, right? Like sometimes it does get you to those better spots. You know I mean? Oh, my yeah. my in-laws yes. are at a beautiful, beautiful resort. And right. there's a lot of stuff to do, right? It's great for the kids. Yeah. We can go swimming. They have a pool and stuff like that. But sometimes it's also great just to be able to get out a little bit further, right? Yeah. yeah. Those, those, those type of resorts are more like what I call, you know, Chris Young resorts. You know? <laughs> that, that, that's, <laughs> Chris the, Young. The tuxedo RV man. That's what, that's what I see. That's his style, you know? We but, like to stagger, you know, so yep. we'll like go to a nice resort. We'll get our yep. laundry done. Right. Um, things that are easier to do at a resort, then we'll go boondocking. Okay. And then maybe we'll go to a state park and then we'll go to a resort again. So it's like we just, we stagger. We know where we can fill our tanks. Okay. Um, we know even at some rest areas we have found in states, you can use their their sewer facilities to dump your tanks there. Oh, that's a good tip. Yeah, so... I'm glad you're talking about that because I do not talk about <laughs> dumping tanks. <laughs> yeah, Texas. You got to. Texas is an awesome place. They have, a, you know, some areas just to pull off on some of their roads. Okay. Texas is obviously big. Sure. So you're rolling through these pretty deserted areas. You're not going to find a park, but uh, they have these little roadside stops you can pull off, spend very the night, cool. just spend oh, oh, the night, okay, okay. and, uh, you know, then move, move on. on. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So, so with you guys kind of bouncing back and forth, right? Like, you know, doing a little bit of boondocking and then going to a resort. What, I guess, extra items or things do you need to bring with you to, to help boondock? The generator, bro. <laughs> I thought you were pointing at me. No, no. Well, you know what? You're I, I, pretty I was, helpful. I was like, I get it, right? She's <laughs> literally dumping the tanks. I know, because I'm not touching that. No, I mean, yeah, a generator, our a unit has a built-in generator, which is great. Okay. But you can also use a, a portable unit. Yep. And for the dogs especially, some areas are going to be hot. We do not want them being uncomfortable. So we yes. have the generator. It can run, you know, the air conditioners. It can run everything. Okay. Um, but keep in mind with the generator, you know, you want to turn it off at a decent hour. Some even boondocking sites have rules. Okay. And yeah. so you got generator hours in a lot of those sites as well. Sure. And so you're going to want to turn that off at a specific time. But yeah. a generator is is so, so important. Yep. Uh, Fill tanks, you know, as she mentioned. A temperature monitor, because a lot of times you don't know, you know, if you have to leave the dogs while you're boondocking, you cannot rely on power. So a temperature a monitor point. is really good to have. Yep. Okay. So yep. you yep. know there's yep. a problem. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. That's that's a good point, right? Because a lot of people, especially for new to RVing, may not completely understand the difference between like 120 and 12 volt, right? And right. they right. may think that they can run their AC off a battery and it's just not going to happen. Yeah. But, exactly. ba but battery power as well. You know, when you get an RV, mm -hmm. uh, you, you need one that's going to fit your needs. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times you can get one and you're going to want to do mods to it. You know, yeah. you may want to add some, yeah, bro. <laughs> you want to add some battery packs and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, we are wired for solar, but we don't have uh, solar panels yet. That's something that we want to do okay. that can extend your time boondocking. So check out, you know, how long you're going to stay because your battery power may not be enough. And if you're you know, not running your generator a lot, eh, it kind of gets a hassle. Have all your supplies too. Get your mm. food before you get there. Okay. Have things that are easy to cook. Maybe yeah. you can- Wine, make... wine's easy to cook. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can make some things ahead, things that go good on the grill, um, you know, like recyclable paper plates so you're, you're mm. not doing the dishes, mm, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, just those things because your tanks fill up pretty fast when you're taking a shower. Yeah, you oh, absolutely. You know, so, so just be mindful of the water. And I, she brings up a great point okay. you know since she loves to empty the tanks you know <laughs> so she just, loves, she that loves it that's, that's what it is yeah yeah so <laughs> you know you've got now the availability of some portable tanks you can drain into take those to facilities nearby 
okay. and, and empty those. So that kind of is uh, a revolving thing that you can do. So you can empty tanks. That's yep. not an issue. Yep. Sometimes it's an issue with water. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you're going to run out of water at some point. So like sure. what I like to do is uh, I'll fill up a five-gallon jug, several five-gallon jugs, okay. and I'll use the pump from the unit to siphon water in and use that inside the unit. That way okay. I don't have to break camp you know, to, 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 to go out. The tank. Yeah, that's smart. No, I, that's I, lazy. I like that. No, it's yeah. lazy. <laughs> you know, some people might think you're sacrificing things for boondocking, but you're gaining so much. So mm. you have yeah. to think, what do I like? You know, so when we went to Great Basin National Park and we did boondock there, the stars at night were amazing. We oh, couldn't have gotten that any anywhere else. So when I, when I think of the rewards from yep. boondocking yep. and the experiences we've had doing that far outweigh any yeah. fancy resort. Yeah, yeah. We, had, we, yeah. we didn't have to camp next to Chris Young's family. True. We moved. We moved. You know? I heard they're the worst. <laughs> they are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, uh, I, I just can't express enough how wonderful it is to boondock. Yeah. I mean, it, it is really just a true experience. And, you know, sometimes you make a reservation. Mm -hmm. We had this recently okay. uh, where we made a reservation. We got to the park. It wasn't us. I'm not saying it, I'm not gonna say it was bad, but for us, <laughs> you know, we had to go. Sure, And so sure. All, I, all I did was I got on the internet and I looked on maps for something green. Okay. That's the key. Okay. Look for something green. And okay. the satellite views. You can, you satellite can see Satellite views. Lot and then you find out, hey, that's close to me. And so now you start researching that area. Okay. You know? And that's how you really can find some, some great boondocking sites because if it's green, you're Someone's good. been there. And like, unless it's like, you know, you don't want to go to like a bombing range. Sometimes oh, I've sure, done that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that happened before. So, <laughs> so scary. Yes. Um, with, with, <laughs> with some of those special considerations, right? Like we talk about, you know, um, extra water, bigger tanks, things like yes. that. If someone is new and they think about, you know, doing a little bit of boondocking, I guess, what would they look for in an RV if they're planning on doing some, some serious boondocking? Well, we have a big unit. Yeah. You know? And it's tall. It's tall, you yeah. know? And so it's, it's hard. Ford yeah. Uh, yeah, it's hard. So it's 40 feet long. Okay. That's not really the problem. It okay. is the height. It's a full profile okay. fiber. And so what happens is I can't get a 13-6 high fiber under a 10-foot limb. Gotcha. And, and gotcha. so you may want to take that into consideration, the size of your unit. More than anything else, the height of the unit. Okay. And sometimes... Something I wouldn't have thought of. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes if your unit's too high... You know, I mean, yeah, I've just kind of gunned it, and, you know, went under the limb, but that hasn't always worked. I, I cannot recommend that. I don't recommend <laughs> but it. But boondocking doesn't have to be out in the boonies either. No, right. no, we yeah. talked about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you can really be in, in some great places. Yeah. And so if you're set on that big unit, mm -hmm. you know, try to find uh, A little more sites. specific pipes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Do a little research yeah. ahead of time, you've make got, sure the yeah, site's going to be good. To, while you have cell service, don't wait until you're out there to try to find oh, out the information. I don't even know if we... <laughs> a cell booster. Cell booster. That's a good one. You've, yeah, we work on the road, so we've got to have somewhere. We've got to be able to have a hotspot if yeah. there's, you know, not Wi-Fi. This has nothing to do with your original question, but yeah, a cell no. booster. <laughs> no, that's, that, that's good. No, like I said, it's, it's always good to talk about some of those things that, you know, again, you may need. You know, things you don't think about. And, you know, the five-gallon jugs, that's one I wouldn't have thought yeah. of. Cell booster, that is a, a great pack point. Pack in, pack out. Pack in, pack out. And But, again, when you're looking for an RV, specifically size of unit, and does it have the things that you need to boondock or are you willing to make the modifications to that unit yep. to make it boondocking compatible? Yeah. I yeah. love it. Well, guys, yeah. thank you so much. I really appreciate just kind of sharing a little bit of uh, insight with yeah. me. Hey, you want to go boondocking again? Yeah, absolutely. You ready right now? Yeah, let's I, go. Well, I'm ready right now. We, you know, you like beer. You yes. can teach me about beer. Uh -huh. I'll teach you about wine. Okay. And we can both complain about Chris Young. Where do I fit into this? <laughs> you oh. get both. Oh, yeah, okay. Both. <laughs> both. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, Ivy. Thank you. I love you. I love you too, Papa. Hey, honey, look what I got. A trigger fish. Don't settle for the trips you've always taken. There's a different way to travel. And RVing is the way to go. You can see new things. Travel to new places. Seek new adventures. It's 
moving. All without leaving home behind. You're so fun. I know. <laughs> Travel different with Camping World. Getting out. Let's talk a little bit about electrification, right? Let's talk a little bit about solar. Keith, you have solar in yours, right? Yes, thank you, Camping World. Yes, I got solar <laughs> so this year because we wanted to boom dock more with the boys. Yeah. With a big class A, we needed a big system. And Camping World really took care of us with the solar panels, the lithium batteries, and now we can go out and not stress about power, not have stress about being plugged in. So I'm really excited about our future with Boondock. That is awesome. And Lindsay, we got to see a few of those things. We're looking at uh, some electric bikes that Chris had he was playing around on. What do you think about those? Oh, those have been on our wish list for about a year now. So yeah. <laughs> we're saving up. There's so many items. That's definitely the area that we are eyeing. So yeah, for sure. Uh, and you know, they're they're like 20 miles an hour. They can go for like like 45, 50 miles. It, it's incredible. Yeah, we got to get a little trailer for miles in the back and cruise. <laughs> well, Lindsay, I need your help because I've been eyeing an e-bike for about a year and a half now. I've been okay. trying to convince my wife. So if Ooh. you want one, maybe you can help okay. me convince her to allow me to get one. So is this a two for deal? I think so. <laughs> we'll talk. Well, here at Camping World, we are working on the electrification of recreation. That's why we started Electric World. And my good friend, Chris Young, is going to tell you all about it. Chris, take it away. So here we are in 2021. And you know, it's we have come so far with technology, modern technology and progression of trying to get away from fossil fuels and make things more electric. It's a progressive world. It's an electric world. And that's why Camping World, we have Electric World. It is the electrification of recreation. And each and every day, we are adding more and more electric products to our family of services that you're gonna be blown away of what they can do, not only for your home, but especially at your campsite. I am joined by my friends, Bryce and Nelly, the Jergies. Hey guys. Hey, hey. hey guys, welcome to Avalyn. the- Don't Yeah, that's right, yes, yeah, hey, like tucked uh -huh. in my lap Hey, right sweetie, now. hey, AV. <laughs> can, I, can I get a beatbox from you real quick? <laughs> She's like, let, mm. Can you lay down the track, let Bryce go to town on it? <laughs> <laughs> that's so, a little power nap. Right, yeah. now, you guys have been full-time RVing for three years, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. Tell me what you saw at the campground just three years ago. D different than now. It's crazy how much it has changed, but I mean, everyone was stoked to be outdoors, similar to now, right. but it was louder. Mm -hmm. um, people with more toys, generators running more. Even like, we've had some nights where we've stayed at like, you know, at a truck stop or a, a parking lot where yeah. we're in a long Mobile route. Land. Right, right, right. And even in parking yeah. lots, just, Generators just loud. Yeah. And oof, especially with a baby, it would drive me nuts. Now I'm actually yes. kind of used to it, but it does. Noise is a sound like first. noise. I don't know what the word is. Uh, sound is. sensitivity. <laughs> yes. Well, loud. Mm. Well, no, you know, I think it's a maternal thing where if it, if, if the kid gets waken up by a sound, you're. You're well, like, you're watching. Yeah, exactly. Now. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So no. She I, I tells me that. quiet and I say, we still love you. Well, so when you're camping too in your nature, you don't want to hear like loud noises. Right. You want to hear. The birds singing. Yeah. And if you really want to connect with nature, you're probably going to go to places that might not have shore power. Yep. You know, some places, you know, might not allow generators. Yep. And you need to have some options, not only to power your vehicle, but to power devices, charge cell phones, yes. you know, and mm -hmm. if, if, well, what about, you know, staying connected, hearing weather reports, hearing, you know, thunderstorm reports, stuff like that. That's why, you know, at, at Electric World, we have come up with uh, or have found partners that every day are bringing such amazing products to the table. Uh, for example, have you guys seen this Scorpion 2 right that here one of the, by that Eton? One up? Yeah, so it's got the carabiner clip up top. It's solar powered by the panel here. It's got the wind up as well. What? Yes, AM, FM, it's got, the, it's got the five watt USB charger built into it as well. So you can actually get this thing powered up, charge your cell phone. It's got the AM, FM on the side as well, and also receives those weather reports. A great little thing. I mean, dude, you can just take this, yeah. toss this in the backpack, and, and you're rocking and rolling. And that, yeah, how light is this one? Extremely light. Yeah. Oh, it's got a flashlight at the bottom. You see that? Yep. You put it on the back of your pack. You got the sun coming on it. Yep. 
And it's got the emergency light on the bottom. <laughs> and the bottle opener. And the bottle opener. <laughs> you got to have it. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Because, I mean, if, if you're exactly going to be stranded, right. <laughs> you can't be stranded and empty handed. That's all. You know, it's kind of just one of my things. <laughs> now, can't be stranded and empty handed. That's I love right. That. I don't need a shirt that says that. <laughs> can't be stranded <laughs> and empty handed. Patent it. Electric World. Can't be stranded and empty handed. There you go. No, that's not a thing. Um, <laughs> This Eton American Red Cross weather radio. Now this one runs on batteries, okay. but it does have that same technology that'll pick up, you know, weather alerts and emergency alerts inside the area that it's in. That's awesome. Add that to the fact that it's AM, FM radio and an alarm. So you're saying we can party, but be well prepared in case of an emergency. <laughs> exactly. Right, yeah. And right. we, were in, we were in Louisiana, our first RV trip, there was a tornado watch going yeah. on. We were freaking out. We had no idea. Right, right. Yeah. You have no clue to do, what to so. do because, you know, the, the old bystand is, ah, Yeah, and we're from yeah. the West Coast. Tornadoes yeah. don't happen as much. Right. Like, <laughs> I know they hit Those trailer parks and RV parks. I know right. that. <laughs> yeah. But we were okay. You guys were good. <laughs> the other thing I like about these products, um, most of them are solar. Awesome. They have the hand crank, mm -hmm. they have the lights, they have the AM, FM, they got the USB charging in it as well. Because nowadays, we still have to have our cell phones. We still got to stay yep. connected. So when you yep. toss in the fact like this one here, I mean, just look how cool it looks too. <laughs> yeah, Set this up, cool. yeah, your little entertainment center. <laughs> Give it the crank, got the solar panel on top. Oh my God. The little, the, you know, the little floodlights. This one I thought was really cool because it has the big panel oh, light on it as well. Yeah. yeah. So there's like a that. lot of options, a lot of routes people go. See, and, and that's the great thing. Good. That's the great thing about Electric War <laughs> is you have all these options for not only staying safe, staying secure, yeah. but staying entertained and that peace of mind. You know what, my one-year-old could probably just play with that little woundy thing all like an hour. Give us yeah. power. And even then, Look, you know, the, it comes in handy yeah. more Yeah, did you, did you see you the know? battery on it after just playing oh. with it for a little bit? Nice. Oh, wow. It's already full charge. Let's get a little Add light. that to the fact we had in the sun for a little while, but, you know, you have options that, you know, aren't going to run out on you. Yeah. That's actually like a really big relief, especially people who are new to all of this mm -hmm. and they're just a little worried, don't have to worry. It's great. Yeah. Well, and there's so many people that are thinking, you know, the impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, yeah, we, we want to be environmentally conscious. You know, we want to be diligent. We want to kind of shrink that carbon footprint as much as we can. That's why we have electric worlds. Yeah. You know, we, we want people who are going to get our RVs to be able to go out and enjoy nature. It's not going to be there if there's so much, you know, being taken away. That's so, true. Uh, but we also want you to do it with a little bit of comfort and a little bit I of I love these little too. things. Yeah, we have a lot of them. Right? Yeah, they're fun. Little inflatable lights, uh -huh. they're solar powered, they'll charge your cell phone, yeah. they float. Well, and they're light, so the girls actually like to play with them. Yeah. And we'll just take them around. Mm -hmm. And there's so many options for Are you those still going? Too. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's Yeah, look, yo, you kidding me? And then look, look at this. Do you, have, do you have the smart speaker yet? No. No, but what you're going to say next is that we get to take all this home with us, right? Because. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 you do. You absolutely do. Well, I know one thing Bryce wants to take home. Check out things like this. I was looking at that. Yeah. yeah so that's sweet. Lantern. It's a lantern. Solar. Solar. Charging port. Yep, charging port for your cell phone. Mug. Mug. First aid kit with the filtering With straw. the water filter. What? Yeah, you got Emergency band -aids. whistle. You got band-aids, you got wipes. Band -aids. And you can squish it into your pack. <laughs> you can fold it up and squish it into your pack. Yeah. And it's got the water filter built in. It's even got the clip in there if Watch you need the... it. Watch the... Wow. And, and it double, yeah, it's, it's a land what emergency light. Who thought of this? This is amazing. Let me tell you, that's what's great about Electric World. Every product you see, you say the same thing. What if people, you know, who thought about like, it? Yeah. Who's bringing this on? Some that you're like, we should have had that this all along. Cool. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when you guys are in the campgrounds now, do you see a lot of people walking around or riding around on like those scooters and golf carts and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, golf carts. Lots what about them. some electric bikes? Yeah, I love that. Quiet. Yes. Game changers. We even took some, um, like it was a pedal assist mountain bike. Mm -hmm. I feel like I could go over two mountains with that thing. Yeah. It's just like, you're still putting in the work on the pedal, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're well, yeah, think Going about a mile, no nap time. Stick them in the back, connect it, you know, a little trailer, mm -hmm. and just cruise for a while, and they can fall asleep or yeah. just have a good time. Oh, I mean, you know, you can also use like some of these inverters or these EcoFlow, you know, power stations to charge these things. What's great about these e-bikes? I'm a huge fan of the Go Tracks because they're lightweight. They mm -hmm. got so many different models, sport models. Some of them will go 50 miles, 26 miles. They got 300 pound capacities on them, 350 yeah. pound capacities. What? They're anywhere from like 26 to 53 pounds, 26 inch tires and all terrain. Wow. Some of them are 500 watts, 750 watts. I mean, you can get up to 20 miles an hour. So we're not going to have to fill up gas tanks and nope. bring them with us to fill up our gas. You know. And they're lighter than yeah. motor powered as well. Yeah, they're absolutely yeah. lighter. Now, are, are you a hunter? Do you like to hunt? 
I am going to get into it. Okay, I'd say <laughs> bow yeah. hunting is great, yeah. but you got to be quiet. Yeah. Sometimes you got to cover a lot of terrain. Uh -huh. That's why I love the quiet oh cast. Oh my yeah. goodness. Can you imagine riding that and then pulling out your bow? Well, or a lot something? of people do, right? Because yes. yeah, they, they are do. quieter, yeah. Because they're so quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the other thing about the electric bikes. They're so quiet. And you see those all terrain 26 inch tires. They go anywhere from 500 watts to 750 oh, watts. Wow. You can go up to 50 miles. And this one's kind of like a camouflage color. It's like a neutral. They do even, have some like, of Oh, yeah, yeah. They do have some that are camo too. That's those amazing. are outstanding. Add that to the trust made same thing this one over here 750 watts and then i know you've been looking at the scooter mm -hmm. right here the go track scooter i mean it's it's all about if you got options that not only are fun and enjoyable yeah but also help the environment mm -hmm. that's a win all the way across the board it's yeah, true for sure. add, add to the fact that they're lightweight and you can throw them in the in the rv we did feel a little weird when one time boondocking with our first rv we mm -hmm. didn't even have a solar panel on it at all but with mm -hmm. And like running the generator, you're in a beautiful spot and then you just crank on the generator and I know it works and that's yeah. what a lot of the fumes are going. It's like, it's just not yeah. as nice where now you got the quiet the solar, right. it's yeah. out of the way. You hear all the nature sounds. It's, how many, it's awesome the direction that it's going. Mm -hmm. How many panels do you guys have on your RV? You um, we, uh, on our first one, zero. Right. right now we have a big one and we're going to be adding more on our nice. current rig. Yep. That's why I love, I'm glad you brought that up because that, that, that's why I love the options that we have at Electric World. Like this right here, the briefcase kit, I like to call it the 200 watt solar. Great for not only trickle charging the battery, but can also help power. Some mm -hmm. of those things can help charge your cell phone. You add that to an inverter like this 2000 yeah. watt right here, which will power up to 10 devices. I mean, and turns That's everything nice. into AC power. That's and, nice. And you don't need a generator rocking and rolling. Toss mm -hmm. into that like an EcoFlow home system like we have here. Mm -hmm. Same thing, it'll charge up to 10 things, rock and roll. And if you don't have, don't have the room for the big briefcase, you got something like this, a little EcoFlow fold ups. Yeah, you can put that in the windshield, put it oh, okay. on the ground like that. And this one's 110 watts. I mean, they come in so many different sizes, so many different options. Yeah. Anything from, you know, whatever you need to just make your life better and to help power the things that you need. Um, I mean, this would probably be good because you got a trip coming up. Yeah, actually, you? there's... I do. We got a couple trips coming up. I actually am going on an all-woman's backpacking trip through the Tetons. It's our first time without our one-year-old. Oh, wow. And so we have this small trifold solar panel, and I was like, baby, you could just use this to then charge the breast pump. And because I will be pumping. breast pumping. Yes. <laughs> As I'm hiking the Tetons, the Tetons, 35 miles. So, so baller. That's awesome. I couldn't do that with anything else, so I'm grateful that there's options for me to do. That, or I probably so cool. would have gone on the trip, you know? No wonder you guys win everything so much. <laughs> you are that a bad game. boss lady right there. I'm just gonna throw that out 150%. Yeah. Wow, that, that was her concern. Awesome. It's like, oh, 40 mile chip, great, but I need to pump. And it's like, we got something did. for you. Now, we, now we're good, now Electric we're good. Electric world makes it happen. You know, so there you go. It's all about the electrification of recreation. Electric world, anything you need to power, if you need some solar, you want some e-bikes, mm -hmm. products are getting added every day. It's a new day, it's a new world, and it's electric world. Since 1966, over 50 years, we have been touring this country with you. Every highway, every back road, every adventure made right here in America. The future is here, and we will lead you into the next 50 years to the same places and some new ones with your family and friends. We're charged up and the electricity is in the air. The excitement of what tomorrow brings. A more responsible world. The next phase of Camping World. Introducing Electric World. We're charged up and ready to go. I love you. Love you too, Papa. Yeah. Hey, honey, look what I got. A trigger fish. Don't settle for the trips you've always taken. There's a different way to travel. RVing is the way to go. You can see new things. Oh. Oh. Travel to new places. Yeah. Seek new adventures. It's moving. All without leaving home behind. So fun. I know. <laughs> Travel different with Camping World.
The Land, Water, and RV Show is the hottest event of the summer. Join us in stores or online the entire month of June to unlock the lowest prices of the year on camp chairs, tables, patio mats, and more. Summer trips are better with the right campsite setup, and we have the best outdoor furniture in the industry at the lowest prices. Stock up for your next trip and get the best prices of the summer. Click, call, or come in and visit your local Gander RV and Outdoors today. Welcome back to the Ultimate Land, Water, and RV Show. What's up? It's Chris Young, a.k.a. The Shack on a row of mansions up here. What is happening, Nelly and Lindsay? How are you guys feeling today? So good. Right? So glad to be here. Every day just gets better and better, honestly. That's it true. Does. I agree with that. It yeah. gets a whole lot better, too, when you have a chance to learn a little bit about motorhomes, which both of you guys know about. Yeah. Right? What was your favorite motorhome? They're all so unique and great. I can't pick a favorite. Right? Sa sa even. Yeah. Don't. Same here. There's so many great things about the A's, the B's, yeah. the C's, and Nelly. Yep. That you guys started off with the name. Start off with an A. Yep. And we actually, you know, I actually kind of miss it. I right? Lo I loved our class A. Loved it. Yeah. For people who want to hit the open road and need the freedom of just being able to get up and go and do not have a tow vehicle, motorhomes are the way to go. I, I love agree. my class C. They are awesome. And if you've been wondering which one's going to be the right one for me, let me tell you, no better person on the planet than my buddy Ian Baker, who's going to show you right now. From a 20-foot van to a 45-foot tour bus and everything in between, this is Intro to Motorhomes. So let's hop right in as to why people love motorhomes, right? Why would you have a motorhome over a towable RV? And for me, it's all about the travel. I mean, yes, obviously we're going to a destination. That's the whole point, right? But at the same time, we want to enjoy that travel. You don't want to be, you know, slogging through and just not having a great time. The great thing about the motorhome is everybody is right there, right? Everyone that is traveling with you is all in the same space. Everyone's in the conversation. Everyone is able to play games together. If you have to use the bathroom, which if you travel with kids, I know you're making 18 stops, the motorhome makes it much easier. You can pull over, head right back into the bathroom. Everything's on board. Even if it's pouring rain, you can use the bathroom without getting wet. If you're hungry and you don't wanna have to worry about going through a drive-through, no problem. You have access to the refrigerator without having to leave the vehicle. So the travel in a motorhome is just extremely enjoyable. Now, if you're telling me, Ian, I have a seasonal and I'm just going to park my RV there, a motorhome may not be the best option because you're paying for that motor, right? And you can get some amazing luxuries in a towable fifth wheel or a travel trailer. But if you're planning to go across the, the U.S., see this beautiful country of ours, a motorhome is a great way to do it. Now, Let's talk a little bit about different classes because we do have different classes and there's there's some subcategories, right? There's a, with the super C's and class B plus, but I'm gonna go over the big three today and just kind of tell you some of the differences and why you may or may not want them. So let's start with the most iconic, the class C. This is when you think Winnebago, right? You hear Winnebago, this is what pops in your mind. It's the one with the cab over. It's the one that, you know, your grandparents may have had growing up or your parents. It's, it's that, that memory maker. And the class C is still, to this day, the most popular class of motorhome. And for great reason, one, it's gonna have your lowest barrier of entry when we're talking about price points, right? It's, it's gonna be the least expensive motorhome option. And that's great because it also is the most versatile. Not only do you have uh, you know, a, a 20 foot all the way up to 35 foot option, you have all these different length options, but you also get different sleeping capacity options. You can get one that can sleep two people, you can also get one that can sleep 10 or more people. So when we're talking about versatility with a perfect blend of floor plan and price point, a class C is number one, which is why it is still the most popular. 
And then next up, we kind of move into the anomaly, right? It's, it's the class B, the van, the conversion van. Um, in a lot of people, if you're new to RVing, new to motorhome, they don't understand why people want a class B. Like it's, it's a fraction of the size of a class C and yet it costs more money. And, and we'll get into that a little bit later as to you know, why the, the costs are a little bit higher. But the Class B is fantastic if it's you know generally two people. It, 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 there are some floor plans that can sleep more, but for the most part, it's going to be two people. But the reason Class Bs are wonderful, folks, is you can take them darn near anywhere. They're super easy to drive. As I said, it is essentially a conversion van. Um, and also, the, the options you get there, it is fully loaded. It has everything that your Class A or Class C will have. It has a bathroom. It has a fully functional kitchen. You have storage. You have countertops. Yes, you'll probably do more camping outside because you don't have all the space inside, but that's part of, a, part of the beauty of the Class B. You get to get out to beautiful places like this and enjoy scenes like this, right? Sit out, put the awning out, sit out right outside your Class B and enjoy this right here. If you're looking to travel, you want to do an Alaskan vacation, a Class B is a great option. And the last one we're going to talk about, folks, is the Class A. Right, this is, this is the big boy in the industry. This is the bus, if you will. And they come in both uh, gas and diesel varieties. And this is where you'll see the biggest fluctuation in design as well as price point among motorhomes. I mean, you can pick one up right now, I don't know, probably somewhere in the 150, 160,000 range, all the way up to three to $4 million, right? Like it is a huge and massive range. And if you have ever seen uh, tour buses, right? Like Rockstar buses or, or whatever it may be, a Class A is what they drive. So, you know, again, that range, what you can get, anything from a, a family RV up to a tour bus is certainly there. And I'm super excited to hit those. I know you're going to get in there. You're just If you haven't seen them before, your jaw is going to drop. But first, I want to make sure we hit the iconic Class C so you can see why that is the most popular. The best things happen outdoors, and they start at Gander RV and Outdoors. My name is Bianca. I'm a single mom, small business owner, and I pretty much said, Carter, what do you think about traveling the world until further notice? So we got rid of all of our things and explored the U.S. like never before. We are camping in Louisiana, and it's our first time here. I did not grow up camping. I did not even know how to start a campfire when we first started camping. One of our favorite things about camping in a forest is that when you wake up, you can hear the birds chirping. Be on the lookout for teachable moments. I love being able to infuse real hands-on outdoor experiences in with my son's online education. We've seen one of those before. Yeah. There's something about being able to jump on a boat and go cruise around a swamp and see alligators firsthand. It's just so much more fun. I really like the plants and animals here because everything feels different. <laughs> Create a routine and a physical workspace. And I think we saw this on top of the tree. Every morning, we have a small meeting to talk about how the day is going to run, while also getting the most important things done so that we never have to stress. <laughs> Explore the local cuisine. One of the things that we value when we are traveling through different areas is going to the farmer's markets and learning a lot about the different foods and then use them in our cooking while we're traveling in that area really make the experience rich. So tonight we are going to be cooking salmon and a lot of vegetables. We've got some oranges. Cheers to our next trip. Cheers. <laughs> Take risks, defy stereotypes. I really hope that my story inspires other single moms, and especially single moms of color, to get out and explore and embrace the unknown and do things that are a little different. Found in the cold. Okay, 
Oh. It took a lot of courage for us to step into something that was completely different than what we were used to. And now we can't every single day and we can't <laughs> imagine life any other way. And here we are, folks, the iconic Class C. Again, when you think motorhome, this is probably what you think of. Even if you hear RV, right? Some people hear RV and the, the instantly in their head is the Class C. And as I mentioned earlier, folks, it is for good reason. Um, this is a little bit shorter one, right? They, they call it a 23. Um, and again, you can get a Class C that's going to be up to you know, 10, 12, even, maybe even 13 foot longer than this one. So we can definitely get lots of different floor plan options. This one also, you will notice, doesn't have a slide. Um, I do want to hit on that real quick. When we talk about motorhomes and slides, advantages and disadvantages. So when you have towables, when you have fifth wheels, when you have travel trailers and they have slides, oftentimes, depending on the floor plan, of course, those slides will come in so much that it will close off the camper so that you can't access the bathroom or your refrigerator. You have to actually open a slide up to be able to do that. In a motorhome, they pretty much, it's almost guaranteed, right? When they bring the slides in, there will at least be some sort of path, a walkway, and you can almost always access the fridge and the bathroom. Now, again, there are some exceptions. You know, don't, don't be like, Ian, I've seen somewhere they can't because you're right, there are some. Um, but when it comes to slides, you're generally going to be a lot safer for those slides. Now, the other thing about not having slides, right, is that it's one less thing to go wrong. And as you can see, this is the space we have when traveling. This is a big space. This is what it's all about. We talk about the travel. We talk about the excitement. I don't know about you guys, but I would much rather ride right here than ride in the back of a pickup, right? Especially, you know, if we're going to be in the road for 12, 13 hours, this is comfortable. I can be right here. I can be playing card games. I can build a puzzle if I want. You know, we can do all sorts of things right here. I'm involved in the conversation with driver, passenger. This particular one has another passenger seat over to the side. I'll show you in just a moment. Um, but everyone can be involved in that conversation. That's what makes the travel fun. That is what makes it memorable. And so I love having just different seating options when we're talking about the variety of floor plans. Now, again, you can have one where this is in a slide, but just bear in mind that, you know, as you're traveling, you're going to be a little bit closer, right? It's going to bring things in a little bit closer here. You'll have a little bit narrower walkway than what we're going to have in this one. And, you know, again, access to the fridge. It, 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 what I will tell you, you will hear people all the time. They're like, oh, you know, you can get into the fridge. You can get into the bathroom while you're driving down the road. Folks, for, for safety reasons, please pull over before, before you go into the bathroom or go into the fridge. Um, well, yes, technically you can probably get up and get into the bathroom. If you hit a bump, especially if there's a sudden stop, people can get seriously hurt. You gotta remember, this is still a moving vehicle. And if you're going 65 miles an hour and you have to slow down to 20 in a hurry, someone is getting flung around in here and that's not what we want. So, uh, but you know, it, it is quick and easy just to pull over, get up, do your business, sit back down and get back on the road, right? It's still much faster than having to stop at a gas station or pit stop or anything like that. Uh, also, with, as I talk about floor plans, right? This one being a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller kitchen prep space, they did help make up for that just by giving you a countertop extension here. But folks, there are uh, different floor plans, a little bit longer, where you have a countertop running almost the entire length of this wall right here. I mean, it is huge countertop, big enough that you'll actually have a TV that pops up out of the countertop in some of them. So, uh, you know, when we start talking about different options, different floor plans, that's why Class C's are so popular because again, there is a floor plan for just about everyone. Um, you'll also notice this one has a corner bed. Like anything else in the RV industry, folks, there's pros and cons to a corner bed. The pro is that it frees up a lot of other space in the RV. If, if we have a centered bed, we have to move this bathroom. This has to go somewhere else. We're able to fit both of them back here because we put the bed in the corner. So it allows you to really utilize a smaller space. The downside, of course, is that whoever is on the, I guess it would be the inside here, is going to have to crawl over the other person if they have to get out of the bed to use the bathroom or whatever it may be. So again, pros and cons, just like anything else. Storage is going to almost always be pretty abundant in a Class C. That's another thing going from uh, a towable, especially like a travel trailer, to a motorhome, is a lot of times you will get more storage. Um, class Cs are going to be right in the middle, right? Your Class B, being the smallest, will have the least. Your Class A, being the largest, 
list will have the most, your class C is going to be right in the middle. It's kind of weird the way that the alphabet doesn't match up with sizes, um, but storage size, it'll be somewhere in the middle. We'll see some pretty good storage when we go outside, but you will also have storage here, as you can see inside. Um, bathroom setups will also vary. This one is in a rear corner. Okay, I'll just kind of pop that open just to give you a look, right? There is still plenty of space in there. There are some Class Cs that'll have pass-through bathrooms, um, you know, or, or walk-through bathrooms where they're kind of based more in the middle. Um, and they'll kind of be on either side of the RV. A lot of times they'll put like a shower on one side and then, uh, or, or maybe a toilet, right? And sink on one side and the shower on the other. Um, they kind of split them up and you can walk through them or a lot of times they'll be able to fold the door open, make one big one. Uh, refrigerators will also vary quite a bit. So this one is going to be gas electric. Um, you can get some out there in, in some of your higher end class C's that'll either be like a 12 volt or fully residential. Um, but you know, again, you will have good cold storage space. We take a look up front. Okay, let's turn around real quick. Show everyone kind of up front. This right here, if, if you're wondering, you know what, if you see a motorhome going down the road and you're like, what makes it a class C? This right here is really what is the easiest identifier, right? You see the, the bed right here over the cab. One of the cool things about this, this is basically automatic extra two person sleeping capacity, right? So the thing I love about a class C is even if it's just two of you, if you have a guest, chances are you have places for guests to sleep. That's one of the, the cool things about that Class C. And again, because you know this one can carry five people, you also have enough places for five people to sleep. You have the bed in the back for two, you have two more up here, plus this dream dinette drops down into an additional sleeping space. And it's pretty easy to make up a bed in, in this one. Again, they're all a little bit different. This one has a lever, just kind of pushes down, take the cushions, throw them right on top, you're good to go. You'll also notice cup holders there in the table. Um, you know, because they do expect you to be sitting there while traveling and you're probably going to have a beverage. You don't want that to spill. And so you're good there. With the cab over, this is one of the things I always tell people to pay attention to, right? Because you do want a couple people to sleep up here. They will have different weight capacities. This Coleman has a 800 pound weight capacity up here, which is phenomenal. I've seen some manufacturers that have a little as 350, uh, and that can be a little tough if you have two people. I mean, you know, I'm over 200 pounds myself. My wife and I are going to be basically, you know, maxing that thing out. So uh, having 800 pounds is awesome. TVs can be all over in Class C's, folks. I've seen Class C's with four TVs in it before. This one just uh, currently has the single one here that does swing out. Um, nice and easy to get to. And then vents up top, that's another thing. Um, you'll see it has a vent fan right on the cab over. I really like when manufacturers do that as well. Of course, you'll have the AC unit here to keep things nice and cool. But again, the, the big thing about a Class C, I really just wanna reiterate is one, um, it's going to be the least expensive of the motorhomes. Uh, we'll see a Class B after this one, which again is super cool for traveling, but it's actually more expensive and we'll get into a little bit of the reason uh, for that when we hit that. The other thing about Class C, as I mentioned, it's gonna be the most versatile, both for floor plan, as well as how many people you can sleep. But that kind of, you know, is, is a quick overview of the inside here. Let's go take a look at some of the outside features and again, show you why so many people love the Class C. So as we take a step out here, I just kind of want to show you, um, starting, starting right here with the side, right? You have great camp space. This one in particular, nice big awning up here. So all this is great usable camp space. You'll see power awning as you would expect. Pretty much every class C will have the power awning, but your camp space will differ. We talked about slides when we were inside, some of those advantages and disadvantages. Another big advantage of not having a slide on the camp side is all of this is usable camp space. I have my patio mat here. If I want to set up a table, I can do that. In fact, let me show you this. You want to see something else cool? We'll show you this real quick. Come right in back here. Talked about huge storage. You have massive storage right in here, and we'll get to that in just a second. But what I want to show you, look at that. You want to talk about an easy table setup? You have a table built in this one. How cool is that? You take it out, boom, drop it right there on your patio mat. You have a bunch of storage underneath. If your campsite doesn't have a picnic table, that's fine because you are bringing one with you. Again, so many cool things about the sea. So take a look up front. We, we saw this cab over when we were inside, right? That, that kind of going over top. This is the easiest way to identify that class C. Now there are some where they, this will be kind of peeled back a little bit and instead of a bed up there, 
right? They will put in uh, entertainment center or something like that. There's also a, very, a couple variations of a class C. I'm not gonna get into too much detail, but one of them is what they call a super C, where instead of being on like a Ford or Chevy chassis, a gas chassis, uh, usually it's either on like a, a heavy duty, like a, a F550, or they move up into like a big diesel chassis, right? And those are gonna be more, if you're looking to tow a lot, they'll have really high torque. You'll also get into what they call a B plus, which is actually more like a C minus, but that just sounds like a bad grade. Nobody wants that. Uh, where it's a little, basically a class C, it's a little bit narrower. And in most of those, instead of having the cab over, as I mentioned, they'll have an entertainment center up there. It's built more for two people uh, rather than, you know, like I say, your class C's, which can be up to 10. But as we kind of make our way back, the Class C is a van chassis, right? And that's what we have right here. It starts on a stripped van. So, you know, basically it has the, the van down below, the, the chassis itself. They take it to an upfitter. And what they will do is what they call stretch the chassis. And what that is, is they actually cut it and then they will put in uh, different like I-beam sections and they will expand it, right? Kind of think like a stretch limo. You know, they're definitely not taking it and actually stretching steel, but they're building it like they would a stretch limo. They're widening that wheelbase, allowing you to put the home portion on it. Um, this particular one, Coleman uses More Ride, who is a great upfitter. They do an excellent job. They do a lot of things uh, with like um, computer balancing, drive shaft, things like that to make sure you don't have vibrations while going down the road. Uh, you know, not every chassis is built the same, right? Even though it might be a 350, a lot of manufacturers will do different things on their class C's to help improve that ride. And when we talk about chassis, you're going to have basically three big manufacturers. You'll have the Ford. Uh, you'll see this one is a Ford E350. You'll also have the Chevy chassis, or it will be a diesel Mercedes. Now, you've probably always heard like, hey, diesel's always better when it comes to motorhomes, and that's not necessarily the case. When we get to class A's, eh, that can be the case, and we'll talk about that and if it's right for you a little bit later. But with class C's, the nice thing about the Mercedes or the diesels, you're going to have better fuel economy. It's also going to be a Mercedes, so you will have the quality that comes with that. However, it's not going to have more horsepower or torque necessarily than your gas engines. These will generally be more powerful. They'll also have higher tow ratings on the gas than it will the diesel, and it'll be easier for maintenance. So just keep that in mind uh, as, you know, as you start to look through some of the different chassis on the Class C. But again, as we make our way back a little bit, you know, we talked about great camp space here. I do just want to hit on the storage. You will have all sorts of different storage on the Class C. This particular design, when you have that rear corner bed, a lot of times it will give you this massive storage area that this one has. Something that I really like about this particular one, this uh, the 23, the Coleman 23 here, is that these, uh, this is all like a rotocast, right? It, it's all a composite. And so it's not going to rust, anything like that. It's not metal. And if you take a look, there's actually a plug at the bottom. So you can remove that plug. And so you can use that as a cooler, right? Fill that with ice. You can have all your drinks in there. All the water is going to drain right out. Super easy to clean all this as well. You take it out, take a hose, spray everything out. If you have wood or whatever back here, because all these containers, right? You fill that up and then you have this. You can still stack stuff on top of there. So just a ton of awesome storage. Another thing, I want to hit on right here in the back is going to be your hitch. Folks, a lot of people when it comes to class C's or any motorhome will, will carry, uh, will tow a vehicle behind them. The reason being, once you get to your campsite and you hook everything up, if you want to run to the store, chances are you don't want to have to completely disconnect the RV to make that quick run. So instead, people will have what they call a towed or a towed vehicle behind them. So that way they're able to just hop in the vehicle and take it to the store and be able to do those quick runs. This one has an 8,000 pound hitch. There are some that have 5,000. Again, if you're looking at a Mercedes chassis, you're probably going to be a little bit closer to 3,500, uh, but they do have different tow ratings. And you will also have a backup camera, which will not only help you back up, but will also give you basically that view to your vehicle behind you as you're going down the road to make sure that everything is good. Now, again, folks, this right here is the Class C. It is phenomenal. You have a ton of different options, great versatility. Uh, as I mentioned, it is going to be the lowest price for the most part in your motorhome class. But next, we get into the Class B, the van, the one that a lot of people don't understand. But I think when I'm done with it, hopefully you'll have a little bit under, a little bit better understanding to why so many people enjoy Class B camping. I'm Monet. I'm James. And we're going to share how RV camping has unlocked our family travel dreams. Yay! 
Kennedy is boss lady, as we call her, because she's always telling all of us what to do. And Jordan is our adventure junkie. Anything high in the sky, that's all her. So for us, family travel is just having uninterrupted family time. We're really just enjoying one another, discovering new things. One thing that our being in camping will teach you when it comes to family travel is definitely patience. With setting everything up and just being in such a close quarters all the time, I need help, please. it really teaches you how to work together as a family. <laughs> Making lunch is easy. We can quickly make sandwiches and snacks whenever the kids get hungry. The RV is the yeah. perfect <laughs> mobile kitchen. Well, you go like it. How many strawberries you want? Maybe five and five. five. Oh, okay. Who's able to So are we gonna go live on that island back there? No. Nah. Why not? You don't want to take a boat to school? A unicorn. So you'd rather ride a unicorn or a boat to school? Unicorn. Sun! Hi, sun. Camping allows us to slow down while still having a great time. What are you gonna do? We love doing campfires in the evening, making s'mores, and just relaxing. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> we love to be silly and have fun and the RV gives us a built-in dance floor. It gives a sense of home base no matter where you are. Good night, Daddy. We can put the kids to bed, come outside, enjoy a glass of wine and reconnect after a long day, which is something we're not able to do at a hotel. It has really just sparked an amazing love for us, a different way for us to travel that, that we really enjoy. And this is what I love about Class Peace. It's really just, as I said, not only is it great for traveling folks, but it's awesome for enjoying nature. Um, most Class Bs will have a big side entry door like we have here, as well as a large rear entry door. And what that allows is it allows for the breeze just to roll right through this entire thing. You can open it up. We have an amazing screen door here so you can close it off so you don't have any bugs coming in, but you're still able to enjoy everything else nature has to offer. Um, and as far as usability, I mean, you can see both passenger and driver seats will be able to swivel around. And so again, that gives you access to this part so your cab is not just wasted space. And so if you do have guests here, you have, you know, you can have seating in, in this layout for four. And, and every layout's gonna be a little bit different. As I said, most of your class Bs will sleep two people. There are some exceptions. Some of them have pop tops, with extra beds up top, things like that but these are really built just to sleep too. And you have a couple different style of coaches. This one is gonna be more of an adventure coach. And I'll show you why when we go outside, show you some of the really cool options it has. The other option would be a traveling coach. And that one's gonna be mainly for a lot of seats, right? If you wanna kind of just travel in luxury and you want a lot more seats, you want three, four chairs kind of set up around there uh, besides the passenger and the driver, there are ones that are set up that way. But the thing I really love about a class B is the fact you get everything else you would normally get in a class A or a class C compacted into a smaller space, but I still have beautiful kitchen. I have solid surface countertops. You know, I have undermount stainless steel sink. I have convection microwave ovens. I mean, it is the top components that you would normally see in an RV they put in here. So even though it is smaller, it's not like they cheap out on amenities whatsoever. And you'll also get things like solar. You'll see I have a solar controller built into this one. This one's built to be an adventure coach. When we go outside again, I'll show you a lot of those different Thule options that we have from the rack up top to the ladder to the bike rack. I mean, everything is just built in here. Um, your, your top two layouts for uh, your, your class Bs will be either a rear bathroom like we have right here or it'll be a rear sofa. The great thing about a rear bathroom is that it opens it up. You can see how long all this is, right? Plus you get a huge bath, makes it nice and easy to shower. Whereas if it's a rear sofa, you get more storage in a rear sofa, but you have a side aisle bath and it's a little more cramped. As far as, again, the amenities, folks, beautiful wood throughout. They use like a European wood here in the Thor sequence. I love the two-tone. You can see it is all high quality components. You have hidden hinges right up top here. Um, and, and so people ask me all the time, like, Ian, why is this more than a class C? And part of it is because they use high-end amenities. Another part of it though is when it comes to construction. So if we talk about a class C, they're building all the walls around it, right? So 
before all those walls go on, they're putting everything else inside. So you can have five, six, seven people all working on that at the same time. When it comes to a class B, your shell is already built. So you are restricted for the size and the amount of people you can get in here. So most of it's gonna be a labor cost, goes up a little bit, so it just takes longer to build. And you know, and a lot of people then go to like a, a conversion van, they kind of do their own, right? If you've seen Pinterest, you've watched Instagram, they have all these vans they do by themselves, and it's awesome. If you have the plumbing experience, if you have the carpentry experience, you know, um, if, if you have the electrical experience, you can do it by all means, go for it. But if not, folks, something like this is the way to go. I have a TV here. You wanna watch TV? No problem at all. I talked about those beautiful solid surface countertops all the way throughout. I have a fully functional kitchen right here with that two burner cooktop, the undermount sink, that convection microwave oven. I have all the storage I need throughout. Look at all of these drawers back here. You know, people think you can't get storage in a class B. That is not the case. I have a ton of drawers right here. I have a ton of space here in my bathroom. When I take a step in here, as far as the, the bathroom space, you can see, you know, toilet right down here. This is what they call a wet bath. And what that means is that your toilet and your shower share, share the same space. And it makes sense when you have a smaller RV like this, um, you know, as far as to why you would do that. There is a sink built in here as well. It's kind of like an airplane sink. You know, when you talk about class B's, it is great utilization of space. They use every nook and cranny they can to be able to give you the space necessary. And again, folks, I'm six foot tall. I can stand in this shower without having to bend down. You know, we can't do that in, in all like, you know, towable travel trailers, things like that. So I really enjoy this. When I was sitting right here, you saw the table that swivels out and around, you know, great utilization of space. For the passenger, check this out. We open this up. We have this guy that comes and folds down just like that, right? So if we want to fold this back and out of the way, the passenger right here can just swing around and use this table too. As I mentioned, just great utilization of space all the way throughout. Little bit of hidden storage right up top there. We talked about the screen. Look at that. Close that guy right off. Super simple and easy to use. Lit up top, you have this beautiful awning. I really like this awning for a number of different reasons. Uh, it's easy to use. You can see how easily it comes out. There's corner braces. I did not brace this one up just to kind of show you. You know, you'll just clip that right in place. The legs drop down right here or You'll also see they can attach right here on the body so that, you know, if you don't have a level spot to put them on, you can just bring the legs right back, attach them right there, and you're good to go. Another great thing about Class B's, folks, is going to be fuel economy. When it comes to motorhomes, your Class B is going to be your best. Uh, I mean, some of these, you can be up over 20 miles to the gallon on a Class B, which, you know, again, is, is better than a lot of vehicles that are out there in general. So excellent fuel economy. This particular one is built on the ProMaster chassis. Class B's are gonna have three major chassis. You will have the ProMaster, you will have the Ford Transit, and then you will have the Mercedes-Benz. Uh, the ProMaster is going to be a front wheel drive. And why is that an advantage? Well, a couple things. One, if you're gonna be in snow, uh, front wheel drive generally will operate better than rear wheel drive, right? You'll get a little bit better traction because you usually have a little bit more weight there because the engine is right on top of it. Another thing is you don't have the drive shaft going back to the rear axle. So because that allows you to have bigger tanks and put more underneath the camper. So there's definitely some advantages to that. Um, however, if you want like four wheel drive, then you want to be looking at the Transit and Mercedes Benz options. And they are out there if that's something you're interested in. Making our way back to a little bit further, folks, you see some of the uh, Thule specialty products that are on this particular model. As I mentioned, this one is built to be an adventure class B. You're built to be able to come out and see beautiful scenery like this, right? You want to go biking, you have a space for your bike. Bikes. You want to be able to go kayaking, you have racks up top where you can put your kayaks. And if you need to access it, you can see right here in the bathroom, take a look at that. You have a ladder built in right there. That's super cool. It's magnetic. You can just pop that ladder off. You're able to put that anywhere you want on the coach. So you can access anything you put up on top of that roof. There's also a solar panel up there. So, you know, if you, uh, again, you're going somewhere, you don't have shore power, because these are meant to go to places that you normally can't get to you will have that solar so that uh, you have that trickle charge on your battery. You also have some hidden storage you can see right back here, right? You know, again, great utilization of space there. Uh, you have some electrical outlets, spray port back there. You can still tow. If we drop down, you know, you want to tow a vehicle, you have the ability to do that right there. Uh, you know, you're going to have your four-way and everything already built in. Or if you want to tow a boat behind you, you know, maybe, maybe you're going to the lake. You want to be able to tow a boat. 
This still has the ability to do it. So you have everything you want. Everything is combined. You have sleeping. This one, the bed, I should have showed you when I was in there, but that sofa pulls out into a bed. There are some that will have larger rear beds. A lot of times we talked about those rear sofa floor plans. That rear sofa will drop down into a bed, right? So you have the sleeping capacity. Some of them will have the pop top so you can crawl up there. So we talk about versatility in the class B. There is just a ton of different options um, and, and different layouts that you can have with these. And everything is just packed into this beautiful kind of smaller, tight little package. And for a couple of people that, you know, again, just want to be able to get out, the class B is the way to go, folks. I, I've driven pretty much every motorhome the, the, the out there, right? I've done class C's. I've done class A's, both gas and diesel. And I'm telling you, but far and away, the class B is the easiest to drive. You can take one of these, you know, 70, 75 miles an hour down the freeway, and it is still super simple and easy to drive. And you're getting great fuel economy. And they, you know, they can have some decent sized holding tanks. You have propane on there, but really the heart of it is going to be here. This is where you'll spend a lot of time with your, with your class B. Um, it, and when we, when we, Take a look again at some of the amenities when we talk about the electrical. Uh, we talk about some of the beautiful countertops you can get in here. It starts to make sense why these are a little bit more expensive than your Class C, despite not being nearly as large. So if, if we're looking for something that has, you know, uh, great high-end features, you're looking to be able to get out where a lot of other motorhomes can't go, you know, you want to be able to have bikes, kayaks, and all this other stuff with you in a nice small package, then a Class B like this is the way to go. However, if you're looking for something big, if you want to be the king of the road, you want to maximize storage, you want something that people are going to drop their jaw at when they see, that is going to be the Class A. Let's go take a look. Hi, I'm Carrie. And I'm Ron. And we're the Mobergs. We have been RVers for the past 30 years and we love it. I think we started RVing when we had a really bad camping trip and then we started, we started small. <laughs> First time RVers make trips locally. Start off with easy camping adventures and learn before you go big. We have four kids and so we needed something that had a lot of beds. After they left the house, then we needed some place for the grand. See, and that's Harvey and Cecilia. Another tip is to make two lists. A list of things that you um, brought out of your house, so you put them back, and then make a list of things that you wish you would have brought. <laughs> Every RVer needs an extra hose, extra sewer line, and tools because you never know if you need an extra length to reach the sewer or to reach the holes. It's come up many times. One thing that we find really important to have is an electric frying pan because those smells stay in your RV for a very long time. How's the bacon coming? Mm, that smells really good. So what should we do today? Maybe go on a motorcycle ride. Oh, that'd be fun. You're so fun. I know. <laughs> Every RVer should buy a camping mat because it keeps your RV clean. Check your mattress, test it out, and if you're not happy with it, exchange it because you want to sleep well. Shop at local seafood markets. Because you never know, we might not catch anything. Hey, honey, look what I got. Yes, a trigger fish. <laughs> oh, look at that. That looks fabulous. Another tip would be to have contact cards because you never know who you're going to meet and you might want to continue to have a relationship with those folks. Cheers. Well, this is quite an adventure. It's been quite the trip. When you socialize with people, you always end up talking about where they've been and where it's a good places to go and sometimes we end up going with their suggestions. Leaving a campsite is bittersweet, but there's always another adventure down the road. <laughs> more people to meet, more things to do. That's right. We've really enjoyed it here. This is a beautiful area. And last but certainly not least, folks, is the Class A. 
These are the kings of the road, right? The big boys when it comes to the motorhome, uh, the family. And, and as I said, with these, you have so many variations in lengths, in price point, especially. If you've heard that phrase where everyone says, oh, diesel is better, right? Diesel is king. Generally, this is what they're talking about. And I'll get into that in a little bit, some of the features um, as to why people tend to lean diesel when it comes to Class A's or why people prefer it. But like anything else, it's also going to come with a much higher price point. So let's kind of dive a little bit into the cab. One of the things you'll notice right away, kind of like we had in the Class B, right? Pretty much in every Class A, both your driver and passenger seat swivel. So this is not going to be wasted space. You're able to utilize this space. Also, as far as travel for two people and sometimes even more passengers, again, you have extremely comfortable travel. These, your seats in a Class A are generally going to be better than in both your Class B and Class Cs, right? They're just, um, they tend to be a little bit bigger. They'll have more cushion. A lot of times you have more power options, again, depending on uh, what kind of level, what kind of price point class A you're looking at. You'll also get cool things like this. I mean, if, if I need to do some work while I'm on the road, I have a tablet or a laptop, I have this extra space, right? So for those long hauls, you know, not only is it comfortable, I can, I can definitely kick back, relax. I can lean this way back if I want, or I can sit up. I can do some work right here. You know, I'll, I'll have 120. I'll have 12 volt power. Uh, sorry, it should be USB. No, that's a 12 volt. Yeah. So two 12 volts here. I have some USBs there on the dash. Um, so, you know, you have all sorts of options. Nice big, uh, screen on the dash as well. You'll see this one's kind of cool with, with this. They, they actually have like a composite with like a neoprene underneath it, which helps with the engine noise a little bit. Um, you know, with a gas engine, uh, pretty much, pretty much every gas class A that's built today is built on a Ford F53 chassis. I'm sure there's some manufacturer out there that has something else. I have yet to see it. Pretty much everything gas class A built today is a Ford F53. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's a great running chassis. Uh, it'll have the 7.3 liter Triton V8 engine in there. It's 350 horsepower, about 400, I think it's 68, about 470 foot pounds of torque. Uh, and very similar actually to what they're putting in class C's engine wise, just a much larger chassis. Uh, but with a gas class A, your engine of course will be in the front. It's going to be right here. And so a lot of manufacturers will do something like this. And, and this one in particular with the Thor Ace, they put like a neoprene underneath here uh, to help with some sound deadening, right? So that way it's not as loud. So if you're talking to the person right next to you, you can actually have a conversation while traveling down the road, which is pretty great. Another thing I love about Class A's is you tend to get some upgraded amenities, not just in woodwork, but also in things like this, auto level. Right, so you can see right there, this one has electronic auto level, touch button, level itself out. Uh, you know, depending on some of the other, uh, I guess, features it may have. For example, if you have hydraulic slides or things like that, you may have hydraulic auto level. Um, you know, some of the diesels will also have uh, air level, right? Um, and we'll, again, we'll get into that in a little bit when we head outside. Um, I'll kind of talk a little bit about chassis, some of the differences between gas and diesel chassis. Something else that's become really popular in Class A's, it's getting a little bit closer to our Class C. They, they realized how much people loved having the sleeping space over a cab. So a lot of your uh, Class A's now have a bed feature up top, and this one is no exception. You flip a key, got a bunch of storage up there, and if someone needs to uh, a little bit of extra sleeping, just like this, you touch a button, you drop it down. There's a couple different systems here, folks. There's uh, some that, you know, come straight down on rails, um, like a Happy Jack system. Uh, some of them use like a Schwintech slide system. Um, but either way, right, they're easy access beds just like this. This one uh, is mainly built for one person. It's 250 pound weight capacity, but there are some that are a little bit bigger. You can get up to 500 pounds on there so you can sleep two people instead of one. Um, but I love that feature and I love that a lot more manufacturers are putting it in. When we talk about floor plans and layouts again, just like you know, most motorhomes, most RVs, you will have a lot of options. One of the things I love about this particular one, this whole wall, folks, is a slide. This entire thing, right? From the front, basically all the way to the back in that bedroom, that whole thing is one giant slide, which is cool because that really opens up this space. And when it's closed in, you can still get to the fridge, you can still get to the bathroom, you can still get back to the bedroom, you can access all of that. And when it, you're parked, you get just a ton of space here, as you can see. Um, you know, theater seats are becoming more popular. I 
love these. Let me see if these ones have seatbelts. Let's take a look. Sometimes some manufacturers will sneak seatbelts in here. I don't know if they did in this particular one. Um, I'll, I'd have to get down there and check. Oh yeah, there they are right there. Yeah, see? So you have seat belts in here as well. So if you want to talk about true comfort while, while you're going down the road, guys, that is it. I mean, you are here in theater seats. I, Kev, I don't think you can get a better seat than this right here while traveling, right? Like, this is amazing. I have my drink holder. I'm sitting right here. I can put my feet up. You know, if you want, it, it's a, re a recliner. Just boop. There we go. Yep. I'm good. Got my feet up nice and comfy. Um, whoop. I just love that, that you're able to do that in here. Um, and, and that's one of the, again, the great things about motorhomes I talked about is the travel. And when you have, when that bed is up, you have that big giant windshield. If, if you're a kid and you're pulling up on Disneyland, right? Just imagine having that beautiful view, being able to see out that front as you're pulling up. Uh, having that big windshield is super cool. And again, everyone is packed right in here. TVs are going to be generally very abundant in class A's. Um, you know, again, just, and you may probably have one or two in inside. A lot of times you'll have one outside as well. Now, the kind of the crazy thing about motorhomes, right? We covered class C, we covered class B, and I was talking about how class C's, you know, you can have 10 plus people sleep in them. Class B's are generally built for two. Class A's are usually somewhere in between. Um, they generally can't sleep quite as many people as some of your bigger class C's, but a lot of times they can sleep more than the class B. Usually he's able to sleep more than two people. This one is no exception of the bed in the back, bed up here. Uh, theater seats aren't going to do it, but you will be able to drop your dinette down for uh, a fourth person to be able to sleep in here. Um, so, you know, again, you do have quite a few sleeping options. As far as storage, folks, they're big right? Class A's are big. You have storage all over up here. When we go outside, you'll see a ton of storage out there as well. You know, nice high-end amenities. You can see the uh, thermoformed countertops. They underlit the, um, the, the countertop there as well. Beautiful cabinetry all the way throughout. And again, you know, you can start getting into some of these, you know, multi-million dollar buses where, you know, it really starts to, to take a jump up in a lot of your amenities. This is another one that um, Thor in particular has started putting on a lot of their coaches and I'm super happy for it. And that is auto gen start. This is a really cool feature. What that does is you can have, you know, you, you, one of the other great things about motorhomes, I guess I should have brought this up earlier, is the fact they tend to be self-sufficient because most of them come with a generator. And with auto gen start, you can set it to all sorts of different things for when you want that to fire up. It can be set to voltage. It can be set to time. It can be set to temperature. And so that way, if you leave for the day and you want to make sure that, you know, if your batteries uh, dip down, your generator kicks on, fires them back up, you can do that with this auto gen start. It's just a really, really, really cool feature. Bathrooms are going to be nice and big in a class A. Why? Because you have the space for it, right? I mean, you know, if I sit here on the toilet, I have plenty of space. <laughs> this one's kind of cool. Have a little kibble station, right? They're thinking of uh, your little furry loved ones. You have a dog or something that comes with you. This is built in, which is kind of nice. Um, but you know, plenty of leg room, great shoulder room. The shower is nice and big. I'm, I'm six foot. I can stand in here and, you know, I could be six, five and still be able to stand in here without having to duck down. Right. One of the great things about having a big space. And again, because that full wall slide, I have all this room all the way back. This one uses a 12 volt uh, refrigerator here, but because it is um, 12 volt, you know, again, we have that auto gen start on there. So as I mentioned, if those batteries start dying down, if you don't have shore power, no problem, fire it right back up, charge those batteries up back in the bedroom. I have yet to see a class A with a corner bed, right? You, you will almost always get some sort of walk around bed in a class A again, because you have the space storage all the way around here. You have two ACs to make sure things are nice and cool. Lots of headroom. You know, my, my boy, uh, Keith Sims, he's a tall guy. There's a reason they have a big class A, right? You know, he gets all that extra space. He's able to stand in the shower. Um, there's just a lot of great things that you're getting when you talk about the bigger class A's. And again, we talk about price point, folks. I, I think right now, and these are very, very rough numbers. Don't hold me to it because again, they're ballpark figures, but you're probably 100 and, uh, 130, 140K. You can probably pick up a class A for, but again, it can go all the way up to, you know, two, three, four plus million dollars, right? Um, and so what are some of the differences? Well, the biggest one is going to be 
chassis. So let's talk, let's talk chassis real quick. Let's flip around here. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about, as I said, this one is built on the Ford F53 as most gas chassis are. If you move into diesel, um, you know, kind of the majority of your diesel coaches will have either a Freightliner or a Spartan chassis. And you will get all sorts of different engine sizes in there. Some of them up to, you know, 600 plus horsepower, putting out over 1800 foot pounds of torque. Um, and, and that is going to be the biggest differentiator, right? Is, is that engine, is that chassis. So one, it's gonna give you a lot more power and torque is going to be especially important when you're towing or if you're doing hill climbing. So if you plan on doing a lot of mountainous terrain, Yes, sometimes that diesel chassis is better because it will help you get up those mountains. The other side of it is a lot of times it introduces air. And so that may be, you know, air level. Um, it also, the biggest one, in my opinion, is going to be air brakes. So getting up the mountain is one part of it. The other side, of course, is getting down. So with something with a gas class A, right, or the class C or the class B, you're relying on mechanical brakes. And as we all know, as we've seen, unfortunately, some semis, those tend to heat up because, you know, especially a class A like this, it's big, it's heavy. You're going downhill, those can start to heat up a little bit. So you have to be a little bit more careful. With a gas class A, you start to get those air brakes. It also has an engine brake a lot of times or an exhaust brake on there so that you have another way to help slow down your RV while going downhill. So if you've heard people say that diesel is better, um, it can be, right, for hill climbing, but again, it is going to substantially increase the price. Your starter diesel is going to be no less than, you know, 30% more than a, a uh, class A equivalent for all the other same amenities. Just purely going to that diesel chassis, you are instantly going up 30%, and in most cases, it is going to be much more than that. So, that is why gas A's uh, are very popular, is because you get the big, beautiful amenities. It may not be the best for hill climbing, but you get everything else, and it is going to be a fraction of the price. So that, that kind of covers a lot of things on the inside. As I said, folks, there is a ton uh, more we could talk about. I could, I could sit here and spew information for 20 hours if you wanted me to, um, but enough on the insides. Take a look at some of the outside features, and again, why people love class A's, and one of the biggest ones is gonna be storage. So we'll get to the big, beautiful storage in just a minute. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the front. So one of the things about Class A's you'll notice right away is the massive windshield you get. Um, pretty much gone are the old H-style gaskets, right? Where you have like a big bar right here, right in the center. Pretty much nobody uses those anymore. We're going to be automotive bonded style windshield on here. It's great. You don't have any water penetration. Big, gorgeous piece of glass. And this, honestly, folks, the Ace is a little bit smaller Class A, despite what we saw inside. So a lot of your Class A's will have even a bigger windshield than this, right? So uh, keep that in mind. Just huge, huge visibility there. Speaking of visibility, coming around to the side, uh, a lot of times we'll get something like this little guy. What that is, is that is going to be a side view camera. So, you know, when you have have this big kind of bus style RV, it can be intimidating at first. And I promise you, once you get behind the wheel, once you drive a little bit, you'll become very comfortable with it. You have other options for visibility. You have the big windshield up front. You have side view cameras for both the sides. You'll have a rear view camera for, for behind you. So you do get nearly 360 all the way around the RV. In fact, some of your diesel coaches will go even one step further and give you a true 360 view camera. If you've seen them in some luxury cars, some of your luxury class A's will have that as well. But but something like this is great. You flip on your blinker, boom, it shows you what's gonna be down your side here. So if you're switching lanes, uh, it will help make sure that you're gonna be safe and not hit anyone. This is something that's really cool. Um, a, it's frameless windows, which I always like frameless. They look better, but I really like this one here on the Ace because this is supposed to be for your little puppy, your dog, right? That way they can sit right here. They have a little window, whether it's during travel, they can be literally right underfoot. Um, or, you know, if you're just out here camping, they're inside, they have a window so they can see outside. They're not jumping up on furniture or anything like that. Uh, to be able to see you. But as we come on a little bit further, we talk about storage and storage galore right here, folks. Big storage on these Class A's. One of the things that I absolutely love, you can see, you know, not only do you have that big rotocast bin, but there's actually a little bit of space up top there. So if you have some longer items, you're able to fit them in there. But that's one of the big things about Class A's is just storage, storage, storage. Just to give you an idea, right? We threw a couple things in there. I mean, look at that. that. And that's just one compartment. You have a ton of these all over the place. I could still pack a ton more things in there. So just excellent storage all the way throughout the Class A's. Outside TV, 
I mean, we saw that huge slide out on the other side, but look at this. We have a big awning, right? Huge awning space here. All this is great usable camp space. I have a TV. I can set the chairs up around if I want, be able to watch the TV if I want. I can be setting out this way, enjoy nature. I have so many different options. Um, and again, just huge space, huge walls, big awnings. Kind of the, the story here is big everything, right? When you talk about class A's, it's just big everything. Um, big tires. You know, this, this one happens to have the good year. Um, you know, that they're going to be either generally your, your 19 and a halfs or your, uh, 22 and a halfs. Uh, these ones right here, I think the A says 19. Yeah. These have 19 and a half. Starts getting a little bit bigger class A's. Again, you go to those 22 fives. Nice big tires on those. Uh, make sure you're able to support all the weight. Propane, super easy and simple to fill up and access. You can also see that auto level right down there. Propane quick connect on here too. And some of them even give you an outside kitchen. I love this feature, right? You, you know, you, you want to be able to have a few beverages out here. You can. Nice, easy access to some water, a little bit of extra storage. And because you have that propane quick connect, you can set up your favorite grill, Blackstone, whatever else you want right here. Be able to cook up a meal for either yourself, the whole campground, whatever else it may be. And we talked a little bit earlier about towing. Towing is going to be very popular on Class A's, again, because even if you do disconnect this one, because it is so big, chances are you're not going to want to take this around town, right? It's going to be a little bit harder to park and a little bit harder to drive in tight spaces. So most people that have a Class A do tow a vehicle behind them for exactly that reason. Um, depending on the vehicle, sometimes you can do all four on the ground, right? All four wheels. Sometimes you have to have a dolly where it's just going to be two wheels on the ground. Uh, that will be very dependent upon the vehicle. So I I highly recommend you reach out to someone at your local camping world. They will absolutely help you make sure that you have the right dolly and everything else you need for the vehicle you plan on towing. This particular one has an 8,000 pound hitch. Um, so again, if you have a bigger vehicle, you're able to, to tow behind that, or maybe you're going to a race and you don't need a vehicle, you need a trailer with a car in it. You can do that too, right? 8,000 pounds, chances are you can get a pretty darn big trailer, be able to toss a car in there. You can tow it with this bad boy. Ladder to get up on the fully walkable roof. Pretty much every Class A will have a fully walkable roof. Um, this one has another cool feature, again, that a lot of Class A's don't have, and that's rear fuel fill. And why would that be a feature? Why would you want rear fuel fill? Well, if you ever pulled up into a gas station in a Class A, you'll quickly find out. It can be pretty tough to maneuver around some of the pumps. Again, you can get these up to 45 feet. They're huge. By having rear fuel fill, you can pull up to either side. Doesn't matter if the pump's on the left or right, you can pull up and it will still be able to reach and you can still fuel up here in your Class A. So as you can see, folks, from the iconic Class C to the small and easily traversable Class B to the king of the road, the Class A, there's a motorhome out there for every budget and every lifestyle. To see more, simply hop on over to CampingWorld.com and check out the thousands of pieces of inventory we have available for you. We're waiting, Abby. We love camping because it gets us outside and this is our playground. This is where we adventure, this is where we find inspiration, and this is what we love to do. It's a lifestyle for us. We're here! In, honey. We're out here in the beautiful Arizona desert getting off the beaten path. So here's some of our best tips and tricks for off-grid camping. Off-grid camping means you're gonna to wanna to have all your essentials and necessities with you because you're not gonna have your amenities close by. So you can never have too much water in the desert. Always make sure to top off the water supply before you hit the road. Now you may not have cell reception when you're out here, so that means you're gonna wanna have some analog mapping. Bring an atlas in the RV, or even just download a digital map right to your phone. Oh, check this out. Make sure to fill up on gas before you head out and bring an extra gas can just in case. You want to make sure you camp in areas where you can go play outside and do the things you love to do. Whoa! <laughs> yeah! Woo Sunscreen's important anytime you're outside, but especially out here in the desert. So don't forget to use a high SPF and reapply often. Always make sure to bring the tools to swap out a flat tire and make sure your spare tire is in great shape. In case of emergency, it's important to have a satellite communication device, especially when you're off-grid camping. 
Waterproof matches or a lighter are a must when you're out here to start a fire because when the sun goes down, it gets chilly. As a professional makeup artist, camping allows me to get out into nature and always re-inspires my creativity. Since the epicenter for adventure, and this here is a perfect base camp. Oh! Oh, rookie. Hey. Rookie mistake. Camping in an RV allows us to get out and experience something new and different on every trip. We're super stoked for the next adventure. <laughs> How amazing is that? Wow. Yeah. Good. having so much fun at the Ultimate Land Water and RV Show. Uh -huh. Big dog, that motorhome segment was killer, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you very that much. That was absolutely beautiful. And, you know, we're doing everything ultimate outside. Yes, sir. Land, water, and RV. And we've had a chance to introduce folks now to the best entry-level pontoon booth they're going to find at Apollo, yep. starting at $24,995. And we got a chance yeah. to go see how the sausage was made. And <laughs> it's a great phrase. <laughs> um, no, I, and again, Chris, I, and I've said it before, right? Like, I was super excited. I kind of nerd out in those situations. Yeah, ditto. Um, and I was very impressed by how clean and efficient the whole process was. I mean, from start to finish, they have it down to a science. They do. And then Forest River's been making boats for over 20 years. Yes, sir. So they're one of the best marine manufacturers around. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. The way that they built the aluminum tubing on the side, the, the way that they yep. made the tunes serviceable, mm -hmm. welded as opposed to bolted with sport fins already on there with five weld points, the whole thing. Yep. Everything from stem to stern just proves that this is going to be the best entry-level pontoon boat on the market, man. Well, and that's why I love it, right? You take all those things that are normally options, takes all the guesswork out of it, boom, here you go. Yeah, and so for those of you that may or may not know, we actually have a behind-the-scenes look at how the brand-new Nepalo boat is made, and we're going to show you that right now. <laughs> My name is Ryan Craig. I'm with Force River Marine. I'm the sales manager here for the Napalo boat line that we're launching with Camping World. A little history about Forest River. We were founded in 1996 uh, by Pete Legal. We went into the marine industry in 1998, and we are well known for the performance in the pontoon industry with our other three lines that we currently manufacture. We roll all of our own tunes, do all of our own welding, do all of our chassis here in-house. Um, roll down the line, put on the flooring, add the rails, uh, put all the extra bells and whistles on, and uh, we push it out the door. Why Forest River? We currently, in the recreational vehicle market, have over 100 plants located throughout northern Indiana. Um, the opportunity to partner with Camping World with established locations through every top market in the country. We are very excited to bring our new Nepalo pontoon boat to the market. We're going to offer tons of standard features and uh, well quality built designs from our engineering team here at Forest River, uh, starting with a uh, one piece even keel that runs through the bottom of the tune, 25 inch tunes underneath. Three and a half pounds of pressure in each tune gives you peace of mind in servicing your tunes moving forward if you ever damage or happen to bump into anything unexpectedly. 
A few of the highlights of our Napalo boat on the exterior here is right when you come up to it, what sticks out in your face is our new three tube rail design that will make a distinct look on and off the water no matter where you've seen it. We designed these boats with the most popular floor plans nationally in mind to hit the market running. Napalo will offer 25 inch standard tunes compared to 23 inch standard tunes on comparable products in the market. Our boats are all eight foot six wide compared to eight foot to the standard product that we will be competing against on the market. If somebody's looking to get onto the water for the first time, Apollo is going to be a perfect fit for this customer. We're gonna offer tons of value, tons of standards, features into our Napalo boat at a very high-end look. We designed the Napalo boat with the three top-selling layouts in the industry today, uh, starting with our quad lounger, our traditional lounger, and then adding on to a very popular segment with our four-corner fish boat. When you first walk onto this Napalo pontoon, one of the first things that are gonna catch your eye is the aesthetically pleasing furniture, the vinyl that is on the, the actual furniture itself. We have a uh, beautiful diamond stitch layout in the furniture. The rotocast bases are wrapped in vinyl all the way down to the floor to give it a nicer, higher end look and feel. One of the great things about the interior of this Napalo pontoon is our reef interior vinyl package. Um, it is very aesthetically pleasing. We're trying to step away from your brown tones and other colors that you've seen in the market in the past. So we want this Napalo boat to look good and feel good on and off the water and give it that coastal feel. So what really excites us about this partnership is bringing Camping World together with Forest River Marine. Forest River and Camping World have been partnered for years on the RV side with tremendous results. Between their serviceability, their dealer network, and their financial backing, it's the place to buy a recreational vehicle. And we're extremely excited to bring the pontoon segment into Camping World's portfolio. What's really unique to the exterior of this boat is the exterior rail panel. This is unlike anything you've ever seen on the water. The three, the three quarter inch, three bar rail system is brand new for this new product. It gives it a very streamlined look. Tying that into the continuous rising, as most entry level boats you'll see, you'll see segments of steel uh, where the riser is. We do a very beautiful, very finished, a very streamlined uh, continuous riser to really tie that whole boat together. It gives you a high end feel at an entry level price. So with this new product, what are we bringing? We're bringing the three most popular floor plans in the nation. Uh, we're bringing the TL, which stands for traditional lounger. This floor plan been around since the 80s. It's your it's your standard L bench. It's still extremely popular with friends and family. We're also bringing you the new QL, quad lounger. What does that mean? That means four chase lounges. Extremely popular floor plan across the industry. Last but not least, quad angler is a four point fish system for the guys that want to do both. They want to entertain on the water with the family, but they also might want to throw some lines. Uh, these are three great floor plans available from 18 to 24. We're extremely excited to bring these out for the Camping World buyers. Hey, what's up? It's Chris Young, Camping World, Gander, RV, and Outdoors. I am here with my friend Haley Miller because we got something brand spanking new to show you. Now, Haley, do you have a boat right now? I do not. You do not. Do you want one? I, of course, would love one. Would you love to have this all-new Napalo pontoon boat? I would love to. What is the first thing you see when you look at this? Because I want your instant reaction. This is a reaction video to the brand-new Napalo. Tell me, what do you see? I love the color scheme, yeah. and I love the boldness of the panels, the outside yes, panels. Yes, yes, the aluminum framing. Yeah. But if you take a look with this navy and the reef decor that we have here, which we're gonna see a little bit more on the inside, look at how the aesthetic and everything matches from the logo to the framing that goes all the way around this beautiful pontoon boat. Now, we'll talk a little bit about the floor once we get inside too, but with Forest River, Forest River Marine, I mean, they, they have such a strong name in the marine industry. You, you've heard of them, yes, right? Yes, of course. I mean, you've heard of some of those great boats that they make. Yep. They made the Napalo. And okay. the thing that I love about this, look at all these weld points that we have here on the tune. Now you can get uh, the, the tri-tune, you can get just the regular old two tunes, but these splash fins that we have right here with the weld points, this is usually an upgrade to somebody that buys a regular pontoon. It's coming standard on the Napalo, not to mention the one-piece keel, 
the one-piece riser, the welded tunes that are still accessible for service, three pounds of pressure all the way through, and I like that because it adds that peace of mind when it comes to serviceability. But tell me, I'm stepping up and I'm throwing, throwing stuff all your way, but tell me, what do you see when you look down the side of this Nepala? I love how bold these are, and I love the Nepala logo. Yeah, it I just really, pops, It just right? all ties together. So, I mean, now, now you're a stylish lady. You got style, you got class. Right. Would you put your friends and family on this? Oh, of course I would. Now, do you also like to enjoy music while you're out there? Yeah. And conversation? Yep. When you're relaxing? What is one of the biggest deterrents to enjoying that when you're on a boat? Being able to connect to Bluetooth. Being able to connect to Bluetooth for the music? Yep. yep. We got you covered there. But what about a loud engine? Uh, not exactly. I wouldn't love a loud engine. Right? Right. So one of the things, not only do you usually get just a black engine, the Napalo folks are giving us a white Suzuki engine from 40 to 140 horsepower, and they are whisper quiet. Strong and whisper quiet, so we can still come up and enjoy everybody's company on the beautiful Napalo pontoon. Now, what do you think when you see this beauty? Oh, I love this. The diamond interior, mm -hmm. very plush. This so, feels very good to sit in too. Right, and, and look, the raised lip, it's yeah. plush and it's comfortable. This, Napalo partnered up with our friends over at Allure to bring in this beautiful residential style furniture with the upgraded appearance and upgraded feel, but it's made for marine. So you're getting residential style, residential comfort, but this is an absolute boat seat. It's very luxury. I know, it's plush and comfortable. I don't want to get up, do you? Yeah, No. it's nice. And the table, if you notice, um, I'm a little clumsy, but what do you see about the, the table? You're not going to trip right over any of the bases, that's for sure. It's flush mounted. Yeah. Uh, and add that to the fact that we have this woven floor right here, which we can't really see because the sun's not out a whole lot, but there's a herringbone pattern in this woven vinyl flooring, which is mildew resistant, mold resistant. You can spray it down with a sprayer, as long as you don't use you know one of those diamond tips. Um, easy to clean, because I don't know about you, when I get back from chilling on the lake, I don't, don't want to clean it. I don't want to clean them. Exactly. I've spent all day cleaning it. I want to reach into my storage compartment. Grab out your towels. Grab out my towels. Exactly. Go dry off and then go shower and get to bed, bro. Yeah. But uh, this is upgraded features on an entry-level pontoon that you're not going to find in a lot of places. Have a seat right here at the helm in the captain's chair and tell me what you see. I love how this helm really like goes in with the aesthetic of the Napalo boat. Everything matches, everything flows. And you know, with that backsplash that we have there on the Napalo, a lot of times you get that kind of cheap looking wood grain. Yeah. I love how the folks at Forest River put the blue there with the gray molded helm and fill the steering wheel. Oh, okay. It is soft, soft grip. grip. Yeah, soft grip, it tilts. You got the captain's chair that is slide. It's a full back, not just a mid back and it'll even recline for you. Where's it at? <laughs> I think it's on the right-hand side. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. That's the swivel. Oh. There we go. Look at that. You can turn 180, nice. 360, however you want to go. And there's the controls on the side there if you want to lay it back. Very nice. So it'll recline. So you can be chilling there. You can chill with everybody in the back right oh, here. I'm chilling here, yeah. And then yeah. you had mentioned playing some Bluetooth music. What, what type of music are we going to be listening to? On oh, we got some country, you know, hot girl summer. So, you know, you got a little bit of that little twang in there. You got it. Bluetooth into that ball stereo system. Okay. Absolutely love it. One of the best stereo systems you can get, especially for marine. Add that to the fact that we have these marine grade speakers built into the paneling here that really bump to a good job of kicking out the music. You're going to be able to enjoy that hot girl summer. <laughs> now, do you like the sun or do you like the shade? Oh, I love the sun. You love the sun? I do love your, the sun. Do your girlfriends like shade? More yes. Yep. Okay. So take a look at my Bimini. A lot of times when you get the Bimini, you don't get the added security of having like a Velcro strap to keep you know this on because the wind when you're going down the road yep. will sometimes tear this off. You get the additional security of having the Velcro there, but this is a eight foot cover. Okay. Most of them are only six. Yeah. So very nice feature that usually, once again, you have to pay an upgrade for. Toss that in with the beautiful flooring, the Allure furniture, my lounging space right here. Very nice. Now, what would you and the girls be doing right here? Oh, definitely sunbathing. Right. Sunbathing, sitting back. This is perfect. Now, you can get you, a couple more people in here, too. Now, do you guys like to slow roll or do y'all like to go fast? Oh, we like to slow roll. Like to slow roll? Yep. So, like I mentioned, the horsepower on the engines go from 40 to 140. 
and we have picked the top three floor plans the nationwide for where we're going to put it in Apollo. Okay. So you got different chaise options, but uh, you got a family member that likes to fish. Um, my dad does. My your dad, dad likes to fish. Loves fishing. Yep. Let your dad know that on one of these Napalos, they'll be 18 to 24 feet. One of them is going to be a quad angler. You know what that is? Yeah. Four corner fishing. Yeah. Nice. Slow roll four corner yeah. fishing. So you can get everybody. Everybody's going to be able to find the boat that's right for them. Yeah. What else do you see? What else do you like? I really like how it all ties in together, especially with the motor. The motor really ties it in. It does. It, it does, you know, sometimes the black motors stand out like a sore thumb. Yep. So having that white Suzuki, a very nice touch. All in all, you are looking at the upgraded experience of luxury and relaxation mixed together, which is what an Apollo is all about. And having that come together, not only in the price point, but the availability, the sizes and the floor plans, it's going to be perfect for anybody that wants to dip their toe literally into the waters of boating. Yeah. So are you ready for yours? I am. Is this one right for you? Yeah, I love it. Does that mean I need to get off your boat? <laughs> no. Because oh. I'm really you comfortable can, You right can be here, here too. Okay. It's very I, comfortable. I it is too. very comfortable. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to go take this one on the lake. Find your brand new Napalo at any Camping World or Gander RV and Outdoors location. Leave your routine on the shoreline. Launch into the best days of summer with Overton's. The only place you need for everything boating. Water sports. Fishing and more. Visit Overton's.com, the nation's largest water sports and marine accessories dealer for everything you need for life on the water. What'd you guys think of that uh, brand new Napalo boat manufacturing tour? Did you learn anything? Yeah. Yeah. That I, I want one. <laughs> oh my right? gosh. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Just, right. it, I'm a fan of it because of the, the moments you'll have. Like, it's so stable. Right. You're chilling out there. You get a swim, you get a fish, you get, get a tube. A, yeah. 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 You get a tube, get it going. Perfect for little party. girls. And you get to be little girls enjoying it. Yeah. Yes. Well, of course, we are here at the Ultimate Land, Water, and RV Show. What's up? It's Chris Young hanging with my friends, the Jergies. What's up? Such a fun week this week of everything that we have going on from the brand new Napalo boat mm -hmm. to the Ultimate Outdoor Olympics, which, by the way, I know you guys are going to be cooking some breakfast here a little bit yeah. later on. We got some yeah. competition. I was oh. a little nervous. That I'm lying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The grill skills are real <laughs> you know, when it comes to what yeah. that man can do. Yeah, we saw him in the cook-off. So. Yes. And, you know, the, one of the other great things about what we do here at the Ultimate Land Water and RV Show is so many people are experiencing this lifestyle for the first time. We wanted to take the opportunity to give them product debuts and show them brand new RVs. Like, my buddy Ian is going to be showing us one that... Uh, I think might be just a little bit bigger than Avi. Yeah, we, yeah, we call it her RV. She's like, that's mine. <laughs> it's awesome. It's, it's, it's awesome. Well, he's going to be showing you the brand new J Feather, and that's going to be coming up here uh, right about uh, now. Big Dog, take it away. Coming in at only 1,700 pounds, making it easily towable by a small SUV, this is the all-new 2022 J Feather Micro 12 SRK. you're looking for something a little bit lighter weight, say you have an SUV, you can tow 2,000 pounds and you just don't want a pop-up, this right here is a perfect option. Uh, as you can see, right, it's not the biggest RV in the world, a little bit more for the minimalist, but I love what it comes with. I mean, you can see right here, you get like a futon style mattress. Uh, it is big enough where you can sleep two people if you drop it down. Now, mind you, you will be snuggling. So if you plan on having two people in here, better be someone you can cozy up a little bit with. But I prefer this over some of the other options I've seen out in the industry where it's just a bed. Uh, this gives you a lot more versatility. It gives you a spot you can sit. If it's raining outside and it's the middle of the day, you know, I don't always want to just go in and lay down on a bed. I want a place to sit. This gives me the ability to do that. Now, if I want to lay down, I can do that too. And I have a spot for a TV right here. So if I want to watch TV, by all means, go for it. If you're warm, it's a warm day today. 
I have a Max Air fan running right now, and you probably can't even hear it, right? And you know, it's perfect. You open up the door, you have the screen, you open up some windows, you turn this guy on, it's a huge draft that's coming through, keeps you nice and cool, and it runs off 12 volts. So you can be out in the middle of the woods, no matter, you know, without any kind of shore power, without a generator, and still be able to run that. Now, if you do have shore power and it's blazing hot, and you want something a little bit more, you also have an AC unit in this bad boy, and that thing is going to cool it off in no time because it is definitely oversized for a unit this small. Uh, but I, I do like that they put it in there so you have that option, especially if, you know, maybe it's uh, you and, and a little one and you, you don't need to be able to take a nap. You need to keep it climate controlled. Or maybe you have a dog that travels with you. Maybe it's just you and the dog and you want to go out to the store for a little bit and, you know, want to leave them here in the RV. You can turn that AC on so you know that they're not going to overheat. So let's kind of go through, talk a little bit about some of these storage options here inside, because when you have a small RV, storage can sometimes be tough. So starting off, you do have some storage compartments underneath the seating, and you will see you have access to this compartment, both from inside and outside the RV. The other one isn't quite so much storage as it is access to a water pump, but you will see that you have an option here for winterization. So if you plan to have this one in uh, colder climates, and you know, I'm from Michigan, I totally understand, you have to winterize your RVs, that gives you the ability to do it right there. And you're maybe thinking, Ian, I don't see where you'd run water. Water. We'll check it out in a bit. This one has a beautiful outside kitchen. Some more storage in here though. There are some nets right underneath your air conditioner. Great storage there as well as the same style of storage right here above the bed. Plus you have two additional cabinets located there. Plenty of electrical outlets in here as well. It may be small, but it is not short on places to plug in your electronics. They know that, you know, chances are you're still going to bring a cell phone. Maybe you're going to bring a tablet. Maybe, just maybe, you uh, have a CPAP machine, something like that. This gives you the ability to bring those with you. So you have an electrical outlet right down here. You'll also see the power tower located right up top. Uh, that one you can just drop down, pull up. You'll see the USB ports located there. And you'll also have another one over here underneath that AC unit. You will also see that this one is prepped for solar. They expect you to take this out to places you don't have a ton of power. If you do, they give you the AC as, as well as the TV there. But if you don't, again, they want to make sure you have other options. Now, another thing I really like about this, they're thinking about that, the fact that you probably don't have shore power. And you'll notice they put a 12 volt in here as well as the 120. So if you have a TV and it's a 120 volt and you have 120, great, but more chances are you're going to use a 12 volt. In fact, when we go to the back, you'll see there is a 12 volt TV back there. So if you want to take it out, bring it inside, you can use the same TV both inside and out, which is pretty cool because in a small RV like this, you don't want to have to carry an extra TV with you. And that allows you to use it for both. And again, you can run that off 12 volt, which will be your battery power. Uh, as far as uh, ceiling space, I'm six foot tall, just to give you a kind of idea of space. And I can still sit up. I have an extra inch or two. If you're really tall, you might struggle a little bit, but at six foot, this actually works pretty well. You'll also notice behind me I, is an, a window that I can open. So I kind of talked about that cross ventilation and an emergency exit. Uh, really though, this is just here for code because in an RV this size, if you can't reach that door, you're in serious trouble. So, um, but you do have that, at least that window option in there for cross ventilation. Good lighting in here, a couple LED lights. It's also nice and bright. You have the bright wood in this one. You do have a different color. You have a a couple options for wood color. So if you want something else, you can get that other color option. Let's take a step outside real quick, show you, uh, show you a few of the outside features, starting off with the step. You'll see the step has an aluminum tread with the grip tape. The great thing about the aluminum is that that won't rust on you. So it'll stay looking nice for years to come. You'll also see right here in the door, you have a shade. So if you want to open it up and let in light, you can. If it's nighttime and you want your privacy, you can close that right down and lock it in place. The other thing you'll notice is this one has a friction hinge. And what that means is when you move this, it just kind of stays exactly where you want it. Um, that, that can withstand winds of up to 20 miles an hour, which is pretty impressive. And you don't have to worry about locking it back or anything like that. It just moves nice and easily. You also see right here on the door, this one has a two plus three year limited warranty on there. That is a fantastic warranty that comes from Jayco. Uh, it lets you know that they 100% stand behind their product. Just because it's not a big RV doesn't mean that they're not going to stand behind it. Coming up to the front, we'll see a couple features right up here. One of them is the power tongue jack. 
This of course makes it a lot easier to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. All I have to do is flip this rocker switch that will raise and lower the tongue. Now, this one's small enough. I, I could probably deadlift this thing and lift the tongue up, but being able to have this, not having to wear your arm out, cranking it up and down certainly makes it easier. You'll also see that you have a light for some added visibility there at night. Comes with one 20 pound propane tank, but right behind that, you will see there is enough space here on your rails for two batteries. So if you want two batteries, you can have them hooked up right there, especially if you plan on using solar, having that second battery uh, will certainly help you run things like those TVs, right, that are running off 12 volt, as well as just make sure that you have that extra power for lights to let you be out camping longer. You also notice some blue LED lights right up front here, this fiberglass front, uh, which actually wraps up and around the roof on this one. It has that fiberglass roof on here as well. And then if we take a, drop, uh, take a look down below, you'll see this one is a BAL frame, right, the NXG frame, and it's a Huck bolt style frame. The A-arms actually go into and through the frame and connect back here, making it a lot stronger. It's most manufacturers just weld it right here, but this is actually through frame with those A-arms, making sure you have a ton of stability. And because it is huck bolts right here instead of welds, uh, that's a beneficial in, in two different circumstances. One, if you have any damage to it, it's easier to fix and repair. The other is going to be that it's been shown that rust generally starts at a weld seam. So by a Eliminating that weld seam, hopefully it'll also help reduce the chance for rust to start there. Right up above that, this is a side camera prep. You will have this on both sides. It's a small RV, but if you want to be able to see what's on the side of you, whether you're driving, especially when you're driving, right, um, you can use that. So if you uh, have to maneuver, you have to switch lanes, you're able to see what's next to you, as well as when you're backing up. It just gives you that much extra visibility, uh, especially in conjunction with like a rear backup camera. If we take a look at the wheels and tires, you will see you have 15 inch tires on there. Goodyear tires, by the way. Uh, I know a lot of people are, are uh, really impressed or they really enjoy, they like having Goodyear tires. You will see that comes as a standard on here. Uh, there is a spare tire mounted underneath as well. In the rare event, something does happen to this one. It also has self-adjusting brakes. It's one of those maintenance things a lot of people just don't think about. Uh, you, don't, you normally don't adjust your brakes, but with this, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it because it does it on its own. It also uses a torsion axle for its suspension system, which is uh, generally a lot better for lighter weight RVs like this because it's not as much wear and tear on that suspension, giving you longer, longe longer longevity and life out of your suspension. Another big one is Asdel Composite on here, folks. Behind this fiberglass skin, rather than using a Luon substrate, which will be a wood, they will use Asdel. Asdel has a few big advantages. One of them is weight. It is a lot lighter weight. When you're talking about something small like this, something that you want to be able to tow with a vehicle with a, a 2,000 or 2,500 pound tow capacity, that Asdel makes a huge difference. Also, it won't absorb moisture, so that almost completely eliminates the chance for any kind of delamination in the sidewall, plus it's a green material. You don't have all that out, uh, off gassing. Definitely a big, big bonus. You'll also notice this fender right up top is reinforced, so that way a bigger fellow like myself can step right up here. I can grab this grab handle and that allows me to get up and access anything on the roof. You will see I have the Thule bars up here. So if I have kayaks or uh, you want to mount bikes up there, I can get up here nice and easily and I will have this on both sides to be able to get up there. It also is prepped for solar. So if you want solar again, uh, that's already ready to go. It is just a plug and play situation. Come on around to the back real quick. I want to hit on this because this is another big, big feature of the 12 SR and that is the outside kitchen, folks. TV right here front and center with the sound bar built in. As I mentioned, this is a 12 volt TV that you can take off, take that inside, mount it inside. That way you only have to have the one TV with you. You get the Everchill uh, refrigerator cooler. This will run off both 12 volt and 120 volt. So it gives you that option. So again, if you're just running off batteries, you can keep food cold, you can watch TV, you can have lights on. That is something that is pretty rare in a travel trailer to be able to run all of that off your 12 volt system. You have a shelf up top, you have some netting on the sides for storage, an additional 120 uh, um, outlet here, as well as a 120 back here, plus two 12 volts. You'll see on the side, if you want to store 
for some tools or you're maybe grilling tools, something like that, there you can. And a 17 inch Blackstone back here as well. People, these are fantastic. I love Blackstone griddles. It makes it super easy. Nice, uh, good size here with the 17 inch. Your propane quick connect will be right underneath. So if you don't wanna use this, you wanna have a grill, you can bring that with you too. If you have it like in your tow vehicle or something like that, otherwise you just take it, plug it in, you're good to go. But I love this outside kitchen. Uh, there also are, you have a couple different options for lights here. You have your standard LED pluck, uh, puck lights plus the blue ones and you can control which ones you want to turn on and off. Let's come around to the off-camp side real quick here. Just want to hit on a couple last things. You will see 30 amp detachable power cord plugs in right here, your city water inlet, as well as your fresh tank fill. You also have outside water access back here, and you will see cable satellite input if you have that at your campsite. Once again, you have another handle so you can climb up onto the roof in case you need to access anything on that Thule bar system on this side. Last thing I want to hit on, folks, is right in here. This is a big storage compartment, especially given the size of this RV, that is something that you normally just don't find. I mean, if we're taking a look at the size of the RV compared to that storage, that is huge storage that you're going to have on there. And folks, that wraps this one up. This is the 2022 J Feather Micro 12 SRK. If you're looking for something a little bit smaller, easily towable by a small SUV, this is the one you need. The Land, Water, and RV Show is the hottest event of the summer. Join us in stores or online the entire month of June to unlock the lowest prices of the year on chairs, tables, and patio mats. These show prices won't last. Summer trips are better with the right camp furniture, and we have the best recliners, loungers, club chairs, end tables, and more. Stock up for your next trip and get the best prices of the summer. Click, call, or visit your local Camping World today. To be out here, literally the most relaxing thing there is. Sit in a tree and just watch and see all the stuff that's going on around you. Is this my happy place? Look at that. That's pretty fresh, dude. Yeah. The best things happen outdoors, and they start at Gander RV and Outdoors. So Nate, Rachel, what do you guys think of that little J feather? I'm, I'm pretty sure you could fit about three of those in your pinnacle. Oh yeah, Brickle and Digby <laughs> want one of those so bad. That's the new two traveling dogs mobile. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that thing's so small you could pull it yourself. You uh, know, yes. it will hook you to it. You can just drag <laughs> us around. I'm saving on my fuel cost. I like it. So, so I have to be honest. Maybe it's just uh, I don't know the the way we are, but we did uh, lift it up and, and move it earlier. Did you? A few of us, yeah. we did, we did pull it. Yeah, yeah, it's I you know about seventeen hundred pounds, but you get enough people on there. Ooh, wow. Yeah, well, Chris calls you <laughs> Mister Atlas. I, I like that. That is a stretch. That's that right. is a very big stretch. Um, that being said, you guys have been camping for a while. You yes. guys certainly aren't newbies yourselves, but do you have any quick tips for newbies out there? Uh, yes, make sure you always bring a blender. Oh, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, for making dog food, of course. Nothing to do with drinks. <laughs> Nothing to do with drinks. <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, my man Chris is with Keith and Tia, and they are going to take it away talking about essentials for newbies. Such a beautiful day out here at the Land, Water, and RV Show, which is what I like because we get to come out here. I love looking at the trees. I love the plants. Man, I love running into my friends. Oh, so my RV family, Chris, Keith, Tia. Doing? Boys, what's happening? <laughs> Hey, do you guys mind if I come in and join you real quick? Please, awesome. come on in. I KJ, love the campsite setup you got. Oh, thank you, boy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just going to hang out here for a second before I sit down. Justin, you guys having you fun out here? Rapper. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got a beautiful setup. It's outside. The weather's nice. And you guys got a great camp setup. It is a fantastic campground. I mean. Uh, can we go down to the beach for a little bit? <sighs> I mean, it's a nice beach. You can go. But don't get on those boats, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, fun guy. So sorry about that. <laughs> no, are you kidding me? You know that—that's what I think is great about camp because it gives you a chance to reconnect with the family, the loved ones, while you're out and seeing America the safest way possible. Which is really why I wanted to talk to you. So forgive me for intruding. It's okay. But we have a lot of people who are just now discovering the camp style. A lot of newbies realizing how great it can be. Now, I know you guys only live like 
35 minutes away yeah. from here, right? Yeah, this is local camping for us. Right. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about that because you guys were newbies once. What Ooh, are some, while we're out here. A long time ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, it might not have been that long ago, but you know, it, yeah. it was a while ago. But tell me, what are some of the things you guys consider essentials that people just now discovering RV might need that you didn't think about? Well, I'll start with what we're sitting on right now is you got to find a good camp chair. Yeah. I mean, for me, I've gone through five or six in the last 12 months. You, you think you find one and then you see another one. I walk into a camping world and I see another one and mm -hmm. like the one you're sitting on right now. And then we've got the boys who have their own distinct ones they want to keep. Yeah. So I think you got to start with a good camping chair. What about you, honey? Oh, we're constantly upgrading camping chairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think very important is the rug. Mm. Yeah, Trying absolutely. Trying to keep and minimize the dirt that's, that gets carried inside. Yeah. Yep. And people so, don't think about that because it's not one of those things we think about when we're at home. Now, when you're talking about going long distance camping yeah. versus just, you know, 30 minutes away, is there anything different that you might take or? Well, my husband always has to have his grill. <laughs> right, right. Whether we're 30 minutes or three hours right. away, it's coming with me wherever I go. <laughs> right, okay. right. Absolutely. And the great thing about being just 30 minutes away yeah. is to, to start, I always tell people, try to start locally because yeah. if you do forget something, you can easily go back home and get it. Yeah, don't but, be like us. On our first trip, we went about 12, 14 hours away on our first trip and we experienced a everything. lot of troubles. But it, it, for us, it really cemented our, our love for, for camping and RVing. You know, right. if that didn't break us, nothing will. And you can right. see, look at this place. I mean, it's fantastic yeah. to have the water, the, the woods, just everything this close to home. People got to take advantage of it. They do. And, and hopefully the kids have adjusted. Oh, they love it. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't been an adjustment at all, really. Yeah. Really? They, they've just come right into the lifestyle and just taken to it. That's awesome. Because I know for, for some kids, it's hard to get them off those tablets. Yeah. And they get on those electronic devices, get on the games, and it's like a, a pry bar is needed to get them away from. Oh, do you see all the toys by the water? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I mean, that's also essential, too. I think yeah. if you go into the lake, the ocean, wherever, you got to right. have those as well. But the chairs, yeah. Keith, you're right. I'd mentioned last time, man, yeah. about the padded club chair. Yes, yeah, she did. Tia, you got to be yes. loving that one. Yes, yes. I now, love it. So what did you think of the little hammock rocker like I'm in right now? It's great. I love it. Yeah. I prefer the padded. Okay. You know, it's it's all about preference. Yeah. You gotta find what's comfortable for you. They're sturdy, yeah. lightweight, they're easy to pack up, they Very come nice. with bags. I mean, they got good weight capacities, like 300 pounds here, yep. 300 pounds for each mm -hmm. one of those. And I see you also got a nice Coleman cooler over yes. there, which I think is essential too. Absolutely. Every RVer needs a good cooler to keep yeah. the ice for a couple days, keep your drinks cold. And for us, it's a lot easier. You know, mom likes to keep the RV clean. <laughs> keep yeah. the so if you have out. drinks in here, <laughs> the kids aren't traipsing in and out of the RV all day long. That's, yeah, right. that's a good spot. Yeah. And, and I mean, you got the side tables. Yep. Those are nice. Those little tag alongs are great. Lightweight. Oh yeah. Got, got to have <laughs> the spot for you. The only, these don't have cup holders. So the side table is perfect to put your drink on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's those little things that when you think about it, it's the little things that are going to make the camping experience enjoyable. And if somebody doesn't enjoy it, they're not going to want to do it again. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, and, and don't be overwhelmed. I know people coming in, you think you have so much to learn. This RV community is fantastic yes. to help you out. We pull in a campground. If you're struggling, unhooking or backing up, someone's there to help you. If you forget something, someone at the campground is there to help you. So just come on in and enjoy it. Such a great point. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see what you make over here a little bit later. I know something's coming because I've seen those cooking skills. Um, but these Weber Traveler grills, yeah. uh, the, the portable grills to yeah. me are essential because sure, you can use them at home, yeah. but they use a little small propane tank. Mm -hmm. You got all the utensils that you could use, hangers for them there, but durable, lightweight, and more importantly, storable. You can fold this down and put it right through the pass-through storage. Yeah, storage is a premium when you got a family the size of ours with three kids. So yeah. having a grill that that's compact like that is perfect. I still get my grilling done, but we have the storage for the family. Right. Um, also, like the plates you got. <laughs> I mean, I might. Do, but you only got you got enough for one more when we come back a little bit later. Is we that... absolutely do. Yeah. Okay. You know, I always, <laughs> I always cook a lot of food. She says I always cook too much. So right. we'll have a plate for you, Chris. Don't worry. <laughs> well, I know the boys are going to be coming back here pretty soon. Mm. And uh, one thing we probably don't want is to have the sand and the dirt Ooh, no. and everything get washed into the RV. So what do you say, do you guys mind taking me through your RV real oh, quick? Absolutely. We would love it. Because you got the campsite set up here. This yep. is essential for newbies. Comfort, style, and convenience, I think, is absolutely essential. Yes, uh, and when you're talking about great RVs for newbies, too, you guys picked a good one here. This Pioneer with the bike rack and with it being a bunkhouse for the boys. Oh, <laughs> that was the thing that sold That's our their boys. That's favorite part. Bunks, yes. that word. They love bunks. Bunks, so. that word, but more importantly, My an access part. point. Yes, <laughs> access point into the bathroom as opposed to right into the living area. This is what 
my wife loved the fact that the kids could use the bathroom without having trapes all the way through all day. So right. you kind of minimize where the mess might be. Yeah. Yes. Well, and you so. got the tub right there. So if you need to spray them off, you absolutely can. Yeah. Um, I like these because when you do have the double access point, if you guys want to go out and maybe check out, you know, a little bit of, you know, this, the moon yeah. dropping down on the lake or maybe yep. get up early. You don't have to wake the boys up exactly. by going through their area. Exactly. And if, if they want to stay out a little bit late and play, they can come in without disturbing you guys or the living area. Yeah, and it's pretty, I mean, it's a very spacious bathroom for this travel trailer. Yeah. A really, really nice size. I mean, you're a little bit taller than me. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, but I still have room. <laughs> I'm not hitting the roof, so. Yeah, you still got room. Uh, so, yeah, I'll wipe right. my feet off so we can kind of go I in here. That. Yeah, I'm going to try not to dirty up your RV. Come on in. Yes. Oh, no, this is nice. You got this oh. set up for home and comfort. Home away from home. Yeah. That's what this yes. is. It really is. Home and, on the road. And when you're out there, what are some essentials that, I mean, because so many people, like I mentioned before, are discovering a lifestyle. Yep. What are some things you can say, if you're going to go camping the first time, here's what you need to have? I always start in the kitchen. Well, let me get out of okay. our kitchen. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. This has been a dream for me. Oh, the little drain, yes. Absolutely, we yeah, keep yeah. the things off the counter. It's very compact. It absolutely, absolutely collapses. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, but when washing dishes, it's easy. Even if I'm doing vegetables, washing yeah. fruits and vegetables, I can put them in here to drain and right. they're not all over my counter getting the counter wet. I love that because it's also adjustable for the size of the, mm -hmm. if you got a single sink, if you Absolutely. got a double sink. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know what, I, I think that's a must too because the last thing you want is just, <laughs> you get finished washing something or you're clean, you're like, go? yeah, <laughs> what, what, what do I do with it here? So, and then I see the nice, uh, oh wow, you got the Dutch oven over here too. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Got, you gotta have the camp pots and pans. I mean, I think that's a, that's a must. It's such a beautiful color too. Yeah. A little pop of color in your camper. Right. Well, and, and people don't realize uh, some of the decor and some of the beauty that goes into some of the yes. camping products. Yes. You know, sure, we got the, you know, they got RVs on them and stuff like <laughs> that. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it's still, if yeah. you're camping, it's fun. You know, they're functional, they're fun, they're durable, they're yeah. easy to clean up, and they're easy to put away. That's the, the key, key word you said there, we, durable. We both, <laughs> yes. durable with kids, you need yes. plates like that, that you're not stressed about if it if hits the ground, it's not gonna break, right. you're not gonna lose. Well, and, and you're not gonna bring mom's fine china out on no, the road. That's Definitely right, not, yeah. remember objects shift in flight. <laughs> so bringing your, your, your um, I'm sorry, bringing your plates out right. after you've traveled all day. Yeah. Right. Nine times out of 10, you open that cabinet, they're gonna all fall to the yeah, floor. Yeah. So having some durable plates, yes. Yeah. Very, very good. Now, I know you guys are super organized too, and I see you got some organization things here. I I like these when you talk about collapsible. Yeah. This is great. Easy to store, but when you need a laundry basket or even just a carrying basket, yes. this was a good grab. I might actually take this home. Even when you're packing up to travel, <laughs> yeah, being able yeah. to store some of your objects in there, some of the foods. Yep. Yeah. We use that for a lot of purposes, not just laundry. Right. Toys, Legos, like you said, food. When we're carrying things in the RV, it's mm -hmm. perfect. I mean, no now, wasted space. What about this one? Isn't it cute? It is cute. <laughs> and I like, I'm a happy camper. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love that. So when we're going out yeah. to the boat, yeah. we can put our little towels in there, Right. some of their toys. Just so anything you can carry things around in, it's very helpful. Isn't it? Well, and they're also good for if you have those little storage compartments, maybe under the bench seat or something like Absolutely. that. They'll fit in there, or you know, you know, even in the in if the you pantry. don't if you got room in a pantry space, you don't want to just have it laying about. Right. You can put stuff in there. Right. I I like the way they thought about the camping lifestyle yeah. to make it easy for you, and I think comfort. Keith, you were sitting next to one. Yes, yeah. very, very comfortable couch, and it folds out to be a bed, which mm -hmm. gives us extra sleeping. Because remember, we have three boys, so yeah. there's constantly a fight for who gets the bunks. <laughs> right. So every night we kind of have to rotate them through, and the loser ends up on the sofa. And the, the booth then it also folds <laughs> down to a bed, but it works so well. I mean, but it really so, it, I mean, yeah, but these are plush and comfortable yeah. too, but is the fight for the top bunk or the bottom bunk? You know, I don't think it actually matters to them. It's oh, just the bunk. Just, just, the just bunk. that word they just bunk. The they bunk, just yeah. want to be in the bunk. And, and they would rather share a bunk <laughs> than to sleep here. But we kind of, they're getting taller, they're getting older. So yeah. three distinct, three or four distinct sleeping areas was a key to this RV for us. Nice. Well, yeah, that and having the, uh, the booth dinette, which yeah. also reduces down into a sleeper makes another nice little spot. This is where my wife will kick me out when I start snoring. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, this is usually where I go. I like the throw blanket too. Those Sherpa blankets are extremely comfortable. So Do you comfy. use that at night? Yeah. Absolutely. I like to curl up there with a good book. Yes. Blankie. Yeah. 
especially when they're outside and it's nice yeah. and warm. Yes, <laughs> yeah, like right now. Or it's exactly. perfect for the afternoon nap when you're just, when you get a few moments alone in the RV, which doesn't happen often, <laughs> but it's perfect just to settle you down to sleep. Mm. Oh, I love Don't it. Don't get too comfortable. You need to go outside oh. and grill soon. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know that's coming, but if you think about it, you've earned that crown. Yes, well, grill king. thank you, I appreciate You've earned that, that crown. No. I like, too, how you've picked an RV that's carpetless. Yeah. Oh. Ease of clean. Glad yeah. you noticed that. That's, she, that's nice. She hates carpet in there. It just It's just easier to keep clean, wear and tear. Again, families with kids, you know how hard kids can be on yeah. your stuff. So this is a great addition. It's for newbies uh, who've never gotten the RV, who've never had a chance to really get in one. Yeah. I think this, especially if you're going to be in there for a, you know, an extended, extended period of time, right. cleaning carpet, yeah. I'm out, man. I also see you guys got some some gadgets up here too that you're thinking about setting up. Yeah, I I'm think a, that's a given. I, I tend to be a gadget guy, and we yeah. don't watch a lot of TV. I know people talk about disconnecting when you come to the campgrounds, yeah. and we do yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. our kids still have their iPads, and so we limit that kind of stuff. But for me, since we don't watch a lot of TV, there's one thing I don't want to miss, and that's the games that come on on Sundays. Thank you. So. I had to get my satellite in order to have it and my Wi-Fi yeah. extender in order to get Wi-Fi to stream this stuff. So it's right. important. When we want to watch TV, we are totally connected with this gear. Mm -hmm. But then when we don't want to, we don't have to. It's not in our face. It's not sitting right. out there all the time. It's just something when we need it, it's there. It's reliable and it works great. Yeah, and those are great because yeah. it'll it'll uh, it rotates and will yeah. auto-locate. So having that's a fantastic a fantastic option, especially for the kids. Yeah. But a lot of the units nowadays come pre-wired for Wi-Fi extension anyway. Yeah. So all you really got to do is just get that and get the service and you're off and running. Mm -hmm. And driving, safety yeah. and security, I saw you got the Fury Envision up there too. <laughs> if the unit does not have oh. backup camera, your own bed, yeah. backup camera, and slide toppers. That's usually the three that I tell people if you're getting an RV, <laughs> yeah, getting into it, try to get that if you can. I, I so. agree with that. I don't know how people back up without a backup camera. It gives you so much vision. And, and we have a system, and newbies will discover right. once they're they're in RVing that you're gonna have your partner be back there and directing. As helpful as right. people are at the campground, we have our signals. I know when she says this, what she means. I know when right. she does this, what she means. I wouldn't know what you meant. So right, having right. that system in place <laughs> and that comfort with your partner makes backing up a dream. Well, I, I gotta tell you guys, thank you so much for letting me kind of invade your space here a Anytime. little bit at the campground. But anything else you want to add for the newbies who might be ex thinking about getting their first RV and setting up that first campsite? Don't hesitate, just do it. <laughs> I love it. That's the, that's the best because you never know how much you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, you do. That's right. And I think that's the key. We didn't know how much we would enjoy this lifestyle. I was really hesitant getting in. I didn't know if I could be in a small space. Big guy, small space yeah. with kids. I wasn't sure. We absolutely love it. I think I love it maybe more than anybody else. And a bonus for you newbies out there is when you have an RV like this, it substitutes as a man cave when you yes. can get it by yourself. Thank so, you, Keith. See, look, so I've been wanting to say that time, to you. you know? I've been wanting to say that, but my <laughs> wife would slay me. You're not going to have a man cave. That's our vacation <laughs> home. I know you out there. Did you buy a Nintendo Switch? Uh -huh. No. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. So awesome. Keith, so, Tia, thank you guys so much. I, I want to get out of the way because I know the boys it. are coming back. Plus, yes. I don't want to get you too mad because I want some of them burgers. You got it. I appreciate we'll, it. See you guys soon. <laughs> thank you. See you. Take Thanks care. for coming by. <laughs>well done chris my man it's uh always good to be <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> so, sorry uh for those of you that couldn't see it chris just about ate dirt <laughs> <laughs> hey man i'm not gonna leave you hanging <laughs> it's, the was... ultimate, it's the ultimate land water and rv show and i can't I can't have my ultimate experts out here oh leave them man hanging. that that was amazing um you did, that was great. Thank you so much for going through, talking a little bit about newbies. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that, you know, oftentimes isn't talked about right out of the gate, right, is RV maintenance. And it's something that is going to be important because uh, as we talked about before, Chris, at one point or another, it's going to have to happen. You're going to need it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're going to need it. It's, and, you know, so many people are experiencing the RV lifestyle and so many people who, who already know about the RV lifestyle know how important maintenance is, which is why we brought Rick and Brent to join us today. Guys, welcome to the Ultimate Land, Water, and RV Show. How are you guys feeling? Feeling really great. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Are you guys ready to talk about some service and maintenance? Absolutely. Sure. Right. And, and, you know, before we even get started, um, I, I think it's very important for everybody to know the best thing you can do when it comes to service in your RV, uh, when, especially when you're talking about bringing it to a dealership, 
manage the expectations and communicate. Yes. Talk to the tech writers, talk to the service folks, and more importantly, make sure all of your contact information is there. Because if you only leave one phone number, no email, that really limits how people might respond to you. So Correct. make sure that happens. And Especially if it's a home phone, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I mean, you might be out in the yard. Guess what? You just missed a call from a tech writer. And there are a lot of people with their RVs there getting service. So they will try to get back to you, but you just got to have patience and get all your information there. Now, we are also, if you got any questions, please just drop them in the comments down below. We'll try to get to them as best we can. But yeah. Big Dog, I know you've been around the block more times than the postman when it comes to, <laughs> you know, what to do properly with the RV and how to maintain it. So why don't you take it away? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Um, and I actually do have a few questions here. And one of them is that uh, right off the bat is one I get often, right? Especially people that are new to RVing. Um, you know, they go in for the first time for maintenance, had, you know, haven't had to have it in the shop before. And that question is, why does it take so long for my RV to be serviced, right? Like a lot of people, you know, they think it's going to be quick, like their automobile, like their car. And oftentimes that's just not how it is. Brent, why don't you pick it up? Kind of, kind of tell us why that is. Right. Well, that's, that is good because we see that every day. And, uh, you know, branching off what Chris said earlier, you know, make sure that if you're comfortable with texting, whatever form of communication mm -hmm. you're comfortable with, yep. please let us know. I know that our service writers uh, update their email daily. Mm -hmm. And so if you're comfortable with email, cell phone, text, please make sure that we have that information and the way you prefer to be contacted. Yeah. That's, that offers us the best possibility to get back with you, you know, to inform you about what we found on your repairs. Sure, because sometimes it's a split-minute decision, right? You find something, you need to know right. if they want it fixed or not. Absolutely right. So, uh, you know, they bring an RV into me. Yep. Uh, I'm going to look at it. And remember, when you bring an RV into an RV shop, an RV is a house Combined with a vehicle. Right, right. Combined right. with a tent, combined <laughs> yeah. with, you know, uh, whatever, you know, all these things put together in this, in this one apparatus, right? So Rick and I have to be able to look at your plumbing. Right. We don't call a separate plumber to come in. We have to yep. look at your electric, electrical. Right. 12 volt and 110 AC electricity. We have to be carpenters. Look at the woodwork. Right. That's right. in it. We have to deal with mechanics, such as axles. We yeah. have to deal with tires. We have to be your tire man. Uh, all those things, remember, I'm looking at all those things. When you give me a list that you want repaired, I'm looking at all those things. So that in itself takes a bit of time for me to work through you know, each of those scenarios. Yeah, all those systems. Right. So then let's say that I figure out what's going on. I've got a list of things. Let's say that we need a part. Okay, I give that information to my service rider, and when you buy a Ford, let's say you buy a Ford vehicle, right? You go to a Ford dealership owned by the manufacturer, owned by Ford. The manufacturer Ford supplies Ford parts to the Ford dealer. That checks out. Yep. Well, <laughs> when you bring me your Coleman trailer, I do not have Coleman specifically supplying every Coleman part to right. me to fix every single thing that's wrong with your Coleman trailer. Right, because we have so many brands out there, so many different yeah. manufacturers, yeah, Correct. and they just don't supply them. Right, so then my service writer gets your work order from me, sees the parts that are needed, then they begin the process of trying to get those parts from Coleman. And a lot of them are, are handmade once the order's placed, right? Isn't that usually the case in some scenarios? Right. It depends on what they've stocked, you know. Um, we, may, we may have to wait on a, an appliance to be built. We may have to wait on cabinetry to be cut and put together, Well, depending it, on what we need. Well, that makes sense on, on model year, right? Because if it's two, three years old, chances are it has different cabinetry than what they're running in the shop currently. Right. Exactly. The manufacturers change every year. And Rick, you had mentioned earlier, or uh, Brent, you had mentioned earlier, even like mid-year changes. Yeah. Rick, and they also at? will change runs in the middle. So we have to wait for cabinetry or something. They have to get back to those cabinets that they were making at that time, you know, or fiberglass products, things like that. So that's why it can also take a lot of time. All right. So even though we try to be as efficient as possible in getting those parts ordered, we experience delays as far as getting the part actually in our hands to get it on your RV. Okay. So we ask that you, you know, please be patient with us in that regard. 
also, I would suggest to give the service riders the most amount of details that they can. Um, tell them where they were camping, what they were plugged into, what the weather was like. Because if you're having experiencing air conditioning problems, you know, it might be the power that you're plugged into or it might be temperature or something like that. So there's a lot of factors and they need to know all the information they can possibly have. And that will save sometimes the customer money and time yep. if we have the details ahead of time. Right. You know? but, and, and that makes sense because I've, I've actually talked to people before and they're like, you know, why won't my AC work? You know, I, I have AC power. I'm like, well, what are you plugged into? And then you find out, you know, it's just an extension cord from their house. Yeah. And the, like, the neighbor's oh, well, driveway. There's, yeah. there's, there's yeah. the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you guys a lot. You know, again, that's something we hear often. And I think just kind of having that expectation will, will definitely help. Right. Yeah. Well, and to, to his point, the diagnosis, I mean, this isn't an episode of house, you know, you gotta, we don't have somebody that's going to be able to guess it. You got to bring as much information so that our specialists can diagnose everything that you got and yep. the patients. I think patience is, is key. Awesome. Um, here's, here's another one. This is a good one. Cause I've, I've seen it a lot on, um, Instagram, on Pinterest, right? More and more people are renovating RVs. Um, you know, we, we have a new design center now, you know, in, in a lot of our stores yep. specifically for that, because a lot of people want what they want, right? They want to customize it. They want to change it. But the question is, I'm renovating my RV this summer. Is my warranty still intact if I replace things inside? Ooh, Rick? Uh, the, it shouldn't affect the warranty if it's not something that you replaced. If it's, um, if you've replaced, of course, the manufacturer's not going to cover anything that you replace. Uh, but if it's an appliance uh, warranty or something like that, that won't affect it. Um, and your manufacturing warranty is usually one year typically. And I don't know how many people are renovating in the first year. Sure. And if after that, if it's um, extended warranty, then extended warranty doesn't care what the decor looks like or whatever. They're going to cover that appliance and we'll try to get our, the appliance covered the best we can, you know. That, that, that to me is why the Good Sam ESP, the extended warranty plan, you know, and the additional coverage is, is so important because not only of things that may happen, but because of scenarios like that, you're eventually going to want to swap some stuff out. Yeah. And some of the appliances can be very costly to replace. So that might cover that service plan, you know, cost in the long run. So. It's, it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, definitely. at the end of the day, it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Brent, you want to add anything to that? Right. And well, that goes along with kind of, I think the overall theme of this is communication. If you feel like you have done something that's going to invalidate your warranty, call us. Yeah, right. Let, right. A, let <laughs> us know. Let us help you yeah. figure out what to do, okay? If, you, if you're afraid that you've done something, you know, and you need our help, let us help you. Boys, tell I ripped us the box you, out and I put a pool in. Now I got water damage. <laughs> right. I need y'all to fix it for me. Right. You know, and, and a hot tub on the roof. That's yeah. Right. You know, and we'll, we'll do what we can, okay? You know, to, to help you get repaired what you need repaired and get covered by whatever warranty we're able to get it covered by. You know, just let us know. Be, be up front with us. You know, I've done this. I've done that. What can we do? Right. And, we, you know, we, we're in the business of, of getting you back out camping. So yep. it's, that's in our best interest to have you camping and not stuck at our store. So just let us know. Spot on. Love it. All right. Um, another one, you know, when we talk about, uh, I guess, some of the things that people worry about, one of them is a tire blowout, right? So this one, is, and, and I've, I've experienced this before, so I have a little bit to say here too, but <laughs> can I change a tire by myself? Um, and do I need roadside assistance? Well, I, I know that Rick here has actually had a personal experience uh -huh. uh, with that. So I'll, I'll direct that question to him. Or for some odd reason, I have lots of tire problems over the years. <laughs> um, and I'm very keen to uh, tire pressure and new tires, but still haunts me. But um, I personally had Class C and I, I bought the roadside assistance for myself because you're not going to be able to change a tire on a Class C motorhome right. on the side of the road. You're not right. probably not going to have a jack big enough to lift that kind of weight. Yep. And then you're not going to be able to break those lug nuts loose. And you really don't want to be on the side of the interstate with tractor trailers flying by and right. trying to do that. Um, now, if you've got a travel trailer and you've got the proper equipment, surely you can change your tire. Um, and I suggest people bringing stuff for that. Um, but I definitely, like I said, I can change tires and I've got roadside assistance. Because also, if you have a blowout, it could cause some serious damage to a yeah. unit. And you might need to get that unit towed. 
um, you might not be able to just throw a tire on it and go. So um, I would also recommend to people to really pay attention to their tires, the age of their tires, yes. the condition of their tires. Um, and, and how often would you recommend changing the tires? Every seven years at least. Um, so uh, okay. even if they look bad now, one misconception a lot of people have is that um, a lot of the tires, they're looking for tread wear. They say on my car, I go up there, you know, my tire's looking bald, it's time for new tires. Right, right. Well, a lot of their RVs don't get that kind of mileage on them. So you're looking for dry rot and age because you might not even notice the dry rot, but you want to, you know, make sure that tire, because if that tire sits around for a long time, it's not doing what it's designed to do. Right. It's going to deteriorate. You might not even see it. So... But what I'm hearing is we should probably get tire covers. If you yes, RV. I, store I, I, it with are those tire kind covers of the on. Best things to have. Absolutely, and then two, they suggest um, if you're on concrete and stuff like that for storing it for a period of time, drive it up on some pieces of plastic or some wood, yep. so the acids in the concrete don't affect your rubber tire sitting there in that one spot for a wow. long time. Yep. Really, that's good. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Okay, well, I mean, that's why they're specialists, and I fall down hills. <laughs> and and for, for people that don't know, right? I mean, there, there should be a date code on your tire if you need to see the age of it, um, just to help identify that a little bit easier. Right. Don't, don't neglect your tires. Yeah. Don't, don't put them in a storage, you know, don't set your RV in a storage shed. And this goes for the whole RV besides just tires. Yeah. You know, you can't leave your RV in a storage shed for months on end and expect just to drag it immediately out and everything be like you left it months ago. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that, that's, that's not, not how it works. That's not going to yeah, happen. That's not how it works. <laughs> you, you, don't forget about your investment. You've spent a lot of money buying this RV. You need to spend some time and money to keep it nice, yes. to keep yes, everything working like it should. I've right. seen worse things happen to RVs from non-use yeah. than I've seen things happen from them being used. And, and so, yeah, so... D just the main thing is don't forget you have a set of tires. <laughs> don't forget that you've got this right. RV, you know, sitting in this storage. Line. And yeah, and, and don't forget that just because it's sitting there, you still need to check it out. Just because yes. it might be covered up and everything's good uh, away from the elements, there's right. still deterioration that happens. That's, That's a great point. And, and this, uh, this is perfect. It actually leads me into this next question we just got, which is what maintenance do I need to do every year? You know, you mm. pull it out. Or, or, you know, you store it, whatever it may be. There's uh, some preventative maintenance and things we can do. Um, Brett, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Right. Well, the main thing that I see from customers is that they neglect to check the sealant around the RV. Okay. You have caulking all around the sides, all on the roof. Every seam, every hole that's cut on the roof has caulking around it to prevent water. From right. getting inside. The number one enemy. Water intrusion yes. is the worst RV enemy that I see on a consistent basis. And it's and it's usually simply from neglect. If a customer would watch and look, you know, on a monthly basis, check those things, then they would know when something is starting to go wrong. Yes. When your ceiling starts to get damp, when your wallpaper starts to peel you'll know before you go in there and the wall's on the floor. Yeah. Or it smells like mildew oh. or, or you have mold right. gets inside. Which is so, extremely unhealthy too, not to mention damaging to the RV. Incredibly unhealthy. In, yeah. yeah. Incredibly unhealthy. You may not even know it's in there. Right. For, for such a simple thing as caulking. Another thing I'd like to touch on, on that is if you have a motor coach or say a toy hauler with a generator, make sure you run that generator once a month. Yes. Exercise that generator. Yep. Um, a lot of the generators out there, gasoline generators, and with ethanol and the gas, it doesn't last very long. Um, so you need to get it out. Put some, if you're going to go out there, go even if it's a storage unit, go out there, run it, turn the AC on, put a load on it, you know, let it run 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, exercise it. Exercise your units and get them out there and, and move them. Uh, as much as possible. I like I like exercise the units. I, I guess the same would probably ring true for the batteries then as well, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Uh, battery maintenance is a big thing that many, many customers overlook because they don't think about it. Um, it's just sitting there. They don't really even think the importance of it. Um, with these new uh, fifth wheels and things like that with all the electronics, uh, six-point leveling, touch pads in there, they have to have good battery voltage to work properly. And you don't want to get 
to your storage unit or your campground and you can't get the slides out right. and things like that because you have neglected your batteries. Um, battery life on those things, typically three to five years with proper maintenance, but keep them clean, keep them charged. You know, if you have to, take it home, uh, put it on a trickle charger occasionally when you go back out there, put it in, you know, but also be very careful when you're working with, some of these units have multiple batteries set up. You got to know how the wiring is and how it goes back. And it can be dangerous if, like on the fifth wheels, a lot of them are under a compartment area. Right. And setting off spark by hooking a battery up backwards, batteries can also blow up in your face and yep. stuff like that. Burn so the line. you don't feel comfortable bringing yep. it into you know, a shop and let them inspect your batteries. That's a great point. And I, I get the question a lot, you know, how should I store, when I, when I do put my RV in storage, what should I do with the batteries? Yeah. The answer to that is... If you have a battery disconnect on your RV and you're not plugging it into power at the storage unit, okay. if you're not plugging into 110 AC power, mm -hmm. you should disconnect that battery. The battery is going to suffer a draw off of it just sitting there mm -hmm. Yeah. if you don't disconnect it. About two weeks, it'll drain down. Right. Oh, wow. Really? Right. That's so. Quick. So if you're not plugging into power, disconnect your battery. If you don't have a battery disconnect, take the negative wire off of the battery. Sim very simple to do. Yeah. And that will help maintain the life of your battery. Now, if, now if you are plugging into power, let's say you have a storage unit where you have access to power. Right. Then you want to leave that plugged in and your converter will then maintain the, the charge, charge of your battery. That's nice. But then again, that brings me back around to the first point I had where you don't neglect your system. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because with that battery plugged in and that converter doing the charging, it's a constant source of heat. Heat sure, right. is depleting your battery constantly. So in a month, you need to check that battery and make sure it's got the proper fluid levels in it. Okay. Great tips. Honey, I plugged it in back in January. Well, it's June. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> well, and, and Brent, I know in the, in the beginning of this, we talked a little bit uh, about water, right? And that's the biggest enemy. Is there anything that uh, people should be doing on the roof? I, I know a lot, I hear a lot of people talk about it. It's, you know, kind of high up there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, you know, a lot of people aren't comfortable getting on a roof. Right. And that's fine. That's why I have a job. I'm glad to get on your roof. And in fact, any RV that gets pulled into my bay to get worked on gets the roof looked at. I don't care if it's on the list or not. Okay. Because I know that it's something that a lot of people struggle with or that they just forget about. So I'm, I'm happy to, to get on your roof and inspect it for you and let you know if there are any problems up there. And I, a lot of times I can handle a problem with the roof the same day. Okay. You know, I can, I can, we can call you up and I can say, hey, you need your sealant redone on your roof. And I can get that handled within a few hours normally. So anyway, I, you know, don't be afraid if you have a problem with your roof or if you're not able to look at your roof like we suggest, call us. Okay. And communicate with us. Yep, that's the biggest. That you need help with your roof. And then we will do our best to get your roof looked at and get it taken care of. So yeah, the, the main thing on a roof is the caulking. A lot of people actually damage their roofs and don't know it. Uh, you've got a beautiful campground like this. Sometimes you run under a low branch and you can actually damage your roof and people don't know it. Yeah. And uh, so they come to me for something else and I, I tell them, hey, do you know you've got a large hole in your in your roof, and they're like, "No, I, I had no clue. I didn't. That is not something you want to hear. I, I yeah, didn't no. know that. <laughs> but it, but it's good that we can catch it. Yes, you know, and, and get it handled for you. So so please, you know, if you're if you're not able or don't want to get on your roof, just let us know. We can handle. I would it. also say, um, make sure you use the right sealant. Uh, you don't want to go to Home Depot and get some silicone put on your roof because that doesn't stick. So you're you're not doing any help by sealing over cracks or gaps with the improper sealant. So make okay. sure you get roof lap sealant if you're going to get up there yourself and touch up some areas. You know, just make sure you're using the proper materials. How often should we get up there and check the roof and, and reseal? 
Uh, I'd say three, four times a year. Uh, okay. Get up there. And okay. now, and of course, everything's not going to need to be resealed at that point, but you're going to need to look at it because that stuff with the temperature changes and the sun, it's going to dry, it's going to split, it's going to gap. So likewise, uh, if you had your unit into the dealership and we did a roof seal or a spot roof seal on it, it may be six months ago, it's possible it needs some more again. So, you know, don't, don't be surprised. You don't want to, um, you know, uh, neglect that and think that right. people are just trying to upsell you on something, you know, right. it's could very well be. Ounce yeah, of prevention, uh, pound of cure type of thing. Right. Yeah. right. Caulking is very cheap compared to what it costs to replace your roof. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is a very valid point. Very valid point. Now, and would you guys recommend a, a checklist of sorts, you know, and, and putting it away for the, for the season, bringing it back out? Yeah, I would say uh, it'd be good for people to put together a good checklist of what they need to look at the next time they get it out. Right. Um, and have a checklist. Now, of course, you're probably going to have a checklist of what you need to supplies you need to restock up on. Right. You know, what we used up last That's a good time. Point. Mm -hmm. And so just add that to your list. Hey, I need to, you know, next time I get out here, I need to look at the roof or the batteries. Another thing, um, people should try to take their unit out for a little, uh, like if they're going to go on a long trip, especially, say you got a big trip planned out west. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to take it out and do a little dry run at your local campground or something like that. Make sure that everything's up to speed, especially once you've had it in storage. And do that plenty of time before your trip, so that way, in case there's a problem, you got you time get to fix the dealership, it. We can yeah. get par parts or whatever. You know? Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. we actually have a little video out there now on the Camper World and Gander YouTube pages about, you know, start six months out if you can. Yep. And it leads up to a week before, a day before, that type of thing. Because if there is something wrong with the generator, going back to the parts piece, yeah. you never know. Yeah, yeah, could, could be a bit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So here's another good one, and we hit on this a little bit earlier. Um, it says, does Camping World have stuff for renovating RVs? Which, as we hit on with the design center, right, sure. Chris? Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. And then... Best. Uh, one of the other parts is, uh, can someone at the dealership help me install it, or do I have to do it DIY? No, we can. Yeah, we. I've I've helped lots of people uh, with recliners. Say they want to take a dinette out and put a recliner or two recliners or a different style couch. Yeah, we've we've done all that, and we know how to you know we know how to do those things. Uh, again, just communicate with us. Right. Just let us know what you have. Let us know that get the measurements of the area. Uh, if you already have the piece, get the measurements of the piece. Just the more information, like Rick said earlier, the more information you can give us, the better we can help you. Yeah. And I would say if you're, if you're going to renovate, if you're going to do that, get the furniture, get the equipment from Camping World or Gander, because you don't want to come in there with a sectional that's 1,300 pounds and A, you can't even get it through the door. And, right, and, right. and now you're 5,000 pound Coleman you know, you can't even tow anymore. So, I mean, <laughs> yes. you want to make sure yeah. you get the pieces from us because they're made for the RVs. And right. if, if some of it comes in wrong or damaged, then we can handle that, address that, or if you've got it somewhere else, right. help you with that. Right. Um, we also can do custom work like a lot of people these days are like and build out sprinter vans, and they might want to do some of the stuff DIY, but they don't know, um, you know, how to do it all. Right. So, um we can do different sections of that, like we've done tanks, oh, okay. installs, um, electrical, um, things like that. So you, may, you might be a good carpenter and right. you want to do the cabinets and the bed and stuff that, like that yourself, but you don't feel comfortable with the inverter or the batteries and things like that. We can do all that too. So. You could take my 82 Scotty and help me turn it into a recording studio? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> well, th no, that's cool. That's a great point, right? And, and as I said, with all the, the renovation, renovating we've seen and, you know, the, the vans are very common, yeah. knowing that they don't have to necessarily do all of it, right? You know, if they can, let's say they're not comfortable with electric, they can bring it in and get it done. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, right. it's a big help. Um, here's another good one. Uh, looking at motorhomes says, how many miles can I drive before getting my oil changed in my class C? And what if it was in storage? Does this change? Um, I'd say about every 5,000 miles. Um, or if it was in storage and you hadn't put 5,000 miles on it about once a year, you want to change that oil. Um, when you're, you know, if a lot of people are bringing it in because they, you know, can't do a class C at their home mm -hmm. uh, these days. But, um, you know, it's something that needs to be done annually at least. But uh, every 5,000 miles, I'd say, uh, okay. changing that oil. And don't forget to generate oil change. Right, right. So you want to do uh, that too. Yeah. That's a good point. 
Right. And also, uh, let's say you have a towable. Don't forget the oil change in your towable, which is the wheel bearing pack. Ah, yes. I'm glad yes. you bring that up. You, you're dragging that that RV behind your vehicle. Right. And the oil that you need to change in the trailer is the wheel bearings. So the manufacturers normally recommend one year or 12,000 miles, somewhere in that 10 to 12,000 for those wheel bearings, right. you know, or once a year. So yeah, don't, okay. don't neglect those. And the, the smaller your axles are, the more often you need to change. If your axles are larger, you have more grease in the axle. Makes sense. So it lasts longer. You know, you can go a few more thousand miles in a, in a larger axle RV. Right. But, uh, yeah, so don't forget that. A lot of blowouts are caused by overheating bearings. Yeah, that's because really? they're replacing a bearing is not fun. No. And that's definitely not one you want Another, to do on your own. Another <laughs> uh, thing on that, um, a lot of trailers these days have Zerk fittings on the axles, usually behind a rubber boot or something. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they every time they go out, they pump two or three pumps of grease in there. That's not doing any good either because it's just packing it by the back seal. Mm -hmm. And you get too much grease in there and it gets hot and starts slinging all out of it. So... Too okay. much grease is also bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, it so actually real, blows the seal out. Yeah, yeah so real, yeah. taking them physically apart and physically packing them is the way you want to do it and put new seals on. Right. Okay. I, That's I, great to know. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I have heard that actually, that that, a lot of times we, we find that on the uh, on the axles that people think they're doing good and just pumping way too much grease in there. Right. right. I know it seems convenient. It seems wonderful and easy. <laughs> but it, it's so easy to overdo it. Yeah, right. problem. Right. Yep. Well, I think we got time for maybe one more because I know these guys got to get back. They got a lot of RVs lined up. Yeah, <laughs> a absolutely. Um, here's a good one. It says, uh, "Does Camping World offer RV washes?" I hate getting up on the roof. I can I can understand that. <laughs> 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 I I don't have a fear of heights until it's uh, 13 foot off the ground right. and I have yeah. you know less than eight feet. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> when it's wet. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Especially yes. When it's wet. It's wet yeah. Soapy. Yeah. yeah. Well, Slick, yeah. So, yeah. So, I've fielded most of the roof questions. So, uh, yeah, Will, I'll wash your roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and we actually have, you know, because our store is is a little larger, I think, than most. Uh, we have a dedicated uh, wash staff. Oh, okay. Actually, uh, but again, that goes with communicating with your store mm -hmm. to find out what your store can do. Not all right. stores have dedicated wash staff. Sure. Right. Uh, so just let us know what you need. If you need your RV washed, if we can do it, we'll do it. Awesome. Yeah, some stores don't have quite the facility to do it regularly for people. Right. So just, just so just if you get a chance, check. But more importantly, what you want to do is you want to communicate. When you're managing expectations and you know what's ahead of you, you know what you're bringing to the table, and you know what needs to be done, the process will be a whole lot easier to handle than if you just drop your RV off and say, oh, I need to get something fixed. So uh, Ian Baker, the big dog. Brent, Rick, thank you guys so much for coming and joining us here at the Ultimate Land, Water, and RV Show. You know, we actually got a cooking competition coming up, so why don't y'all hang around for that? And uh, we'll be back with that here in just a second. Hang on. Camping World is the number one service and maintenance network in America, and it's your one-stop shop for RV support. And with 170 locations nationwide, we have the largest RV service network in the country. We stand by our work. Anytime you receive service at one of our locations, you drive away with a 12-month workmanship guarantee. Your RV is an investment, and it deserves the very best in care and preventative maintenance. We're here for you. Schedule a service appointment today. Welcome back to the Ultimate Land, Water, and RV Show. As you know, we have the Ultimate Outdoor Olympics going on all week. We are here at day number four. We are ready for the next competition. This one is all about the skill on the grill, the ultimate cooking competition, as you see behind me. Now, after the last two competitions, here's where we stand. The Jurgies, Team Camping World, 6,000 points. How does that feel? Good. All right, follow your detour. Team Gander, 5,000 points. How does that feel? You're only 1,000 off. At 4,000 points, Team Good Sam, sitting back there, two traveling dogs. And I think hiding in the rear with 1,000 points, go about to make a strike, holding up Overton's soulful RV family. Now, today's competition is all about making one meal for our judge. It's going to test how they do at breakfast using one of these Blackstone griddles. What are we going to do? What do you say we find out? Because everything at stake during the ultimate 
Land, Water, and RV Show is about giving away that Nepalo boat. Do you guys feel pretty good about giving one away? Yeah, we want to give one away. Right. We're hoping that this is good enough for your belly. Is this, are you tasting this? No, I'm not. This is all Ian. Ian's going to be the judge, so you got to prepare this for the big dog. So, Bryce, does that kind of change what you think about making? I'm just channeling my inner Ian right now, so... You got to bench press about 700 more pounds. And you, 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 mentally, I can't. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, but you're not going to give up any secrets right now, what you're making? Uh, you know what? We got milk. You know, this, so that's yeah, this like. This is our differential agreement. The okay. ingredient. All right. Going to make the eggs a little more fluffy. Okay. So, you know? Well, uh, you, always does a body he way. is the judge. I'm the fluffy one. <laughs> so, you know, you just got to remember. Okay, now, two traveling dogs. That's right. That's right. They got to follow right. you to get to Napalo. You're currently sitting in second place. Pretty good spot. We got two more competitions, this one and one more. How is breakfast, and especially that vegan breakfast, going to play into it? Yeah, so when I was little, my parents used to make toad in a hole. And this is kind of like our variation of it. I'm vegan, so it's not a real toad. What What? What? what, what is toad in a hole? It's where you take a piece of toast, you hollow out the bread, and you put an egg in the middle. Toad in the hole. Okay. A variation of that, but it's a bird's nest. I love it. My plan actually was just to concede this competition because, you know, I, I know that quitters don't win, but quitters also don't lose because they quit. <laughs> I love it. All right, hey, Soulful RV family. Keith, 1,000 points. I know it's not where you wanted to be being an all pro, being a champion. What are you going to do for breakfast? Well, for us, this is my comfort zone right here, the grill. So we're feeling very, very confident about this. And since we represent Overton's, our secret ingredient is coming straight from the sea. Oh, come on, Tia. Everything's better by the water. Okay. All right, so, 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 so I, I, we're going to leave it right there. We're going to leave it right there because you do have competition within earshot. All right, last but not least, my team Gander group, follow your detour, Dan and Lindsay. Um, now, Lindsay, you said at the beginning, cooking's not really a thing. Not. I'm embarrassed to say that, but it's not. It's not. I crack eggs and they, I get shells, like, morning you eat. So what you're saying is you got crunchy food. Before you eat. So so I, I'm taking it that Dan's going to take the lead on this one? Yeah, I think this is going to be my bread and, bread and butter over here. Yeah. So I think we got something that Ian's really going to like, though. Yeah. Well, he has been a championship judge in a championship cook-off. And I am honored to welcome my brother, my partner in crime, Mr. Ian Baker. Mm -hmm. um, what do you say we let these guys get to cooking and then let's talk about what you're looking for? Absolutely. Right. So on the count of three, you guys get ready to start and we're gonna kick off the ultimate cooking competition. Remember, it is your chance to give somebody that follows you a brand new Napalo boat. Brand spanking new. This is your shot. Two more competitions. Are you ready? Yes. All right, we're gonna kick it off in three, two, one. Scramble me some grits. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So, big dog. Yes, sir. What are you looking for in this competition as far as breakfast goes? Well, based on Dan and Lindsay's comments, first of all, Chris, I'm looking to not get poisoned. Okay. I'm, I love, I'm, I love I'm, that. I'm a little worried. Sound decision. I'm a little Sound worried decision. there. Um, other than that, uh, there's a couple different things, right? The Great American Cook-Off actually taught me a lot. I am definitely a bacon guy. Like, yes. I love me yes. some bacon. Yes. But I will say... The two traveling dogs pulled off some really good vegan dishes that I just didn't expect. Right, so right, right. I'm very curious to see what they're bringing. However, bacon is always at my heart. So, mm -hmm. looking for some bacon, looking for a little bit of salinity, right? Okay. Good amount of salt. Yeah, good some salt. You have hash browns. Right. I That's like I does. like crisp. Okay. Right. Like I I want a little bit of crispiness. I I I just I'm not a big fan of mush on my plate. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so what you saying? You want me to make it? Which, by the way. Ends up, how am I on the opposite side of this <laughs> again, where I'm hosting, you're judging and getting to eat everything? I don't get this. Yeah, you know, Chris, it's kind of like this, buddy. You have all the charisma, oh, and Lord. I have all the appetite. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a trophy at home. I do have a trophy, and it, yes. is, it is the best trophy. Uh, I won it a few years back, and it's, it's the best thing ever, right? It is in the form of a coffee mug, mm -hmm. and it says, number one dad. Wait. In the world. In the world. In the world, In the my world. friend. Yes, sir. See, so that right there alone means he is more. More than qualified. More than qualified to, right. to judge this competition. Well, the ultimate cooking competition is already underway. I see folks are cutting. I see folks are seasoning. I see mixing going on. And uh, I tell you what, big dog. I tell you, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm sniffing. I swear I'm not sniffing your hair. It is the smell of bacon. <laughs> it does not smell of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> but I see it cooking. So I tell you what, we will uh, let them kind of do their things. Yes, sir. Why don't you go get ready for the uh, chowing down portion oh, of this? Yeah. 
Got to get ready. Uh, Got to cleanse the palate. Yeah, and I think I'm going to follow up with everybody here in just a minute if we uh, take a little walk around. Sounds good, buddy. All right, bro. Give me one of these. Give me one of those. Boom. Got it. Excited. See you. All right. So, the ultimate land, water, and RV show is giving you everything from the ultimate experience with the campsites to the brand new Nepalo boats to you might even be able to pick up some cooking tips with our friends here, our contestants. Um, what do you say we take one more swing around now that everybody's on the grill, on the griddle, and just kind of get a feel for what they're doing? All right. Follow your detour. It looks like Dan is picking up bricks. Um, well, this black stone, you know, it's not facing the right direction. You got to make sure... You gotta make sure the grease is going the right direction. Oh, there you go. Okay. You're gonna have a real problem. I'm just making your hand. Huge mess. Oh, I love it. So, so your key to success might be just keeping the grease off of everything. Is well, I don't want it coming on me. That's for sure. So, um, that's step one. You know, you gotta get your setup right. right. Now I feel better. Feeling good about where we're at. And can, uh, can you give me a little breakdown of what you guys are making? Yeah. So we're gonna go with a breakfast taco. Okay. Gonna be hash browns mixed with peppers and onions. We're still 50-50 on the jalapeno. We're not sure at this point. Right. Um, get it real nice and seasoned. Then we're going to go with some scrambled eggs with the bacon in there, top with some cheese. Classic rest breakfast taco. I tell you what, we're starting off right there. Follow your detour. And this is Team Gander. Be sure to follow follow your detour if you think they're going to win and give you a chance to win that Napalo boat. Now I'm going to walk back around over here, Kev, to my friend, Soulful RV family. And right away, Keith is back in his element. The bacon is smelling good. All right, my man. Give me the rundown. What are we doing? Well, we're going to do an omelet, cheese omelet, with our special ingredient. I'll tell you, just between you and me, we decided to go into the sea and get some shrimp. So I'm going to try some bacon wrapped on the grill on top of the omelet. So, Woo! Okay, let me tell you, that's going to blow Ian away. That's absolutely going to blow Ian away. All right, good luck with that, because that looks and smells absolutely delicious. My vegan-friendly friends, I see... I see pretzels on the grill. Yeah, those are the those are the branches for the bird's nest. Yeah, so this is the actual, that's the actual bird's nest, and then we're going to do some eggs in the middle. We're going to lay it on some branches. Yeah. Hopefully I love it. Not a real bird will land on this, you know. You know, if it is, I want it to be a bird of victory. It's kind of like How about a bird of prey, because you're praying you're going to win. <laughs> that's a very good, that's very good. I love it. All right, well, guys, good luck. Whatever you got in there, and on there smells outstanding. Make a vegan out of you yet. Oh, look, the way that you guys cook and how delicious everything is, and if it's good enough for my Neff pups, I know it's good enough for me. I know it's good enough for me. All right, and last but not least, currently sitting in first place, we got Team Camping World. Bryce and Nelly. Wow, you guys are working in tandem here. One's shaking a knife, one's using the spatula. Well, this is always so. shaking a knife. <laughs> so, so give me the rundown. What are we making? So, um... We got some onions, peppers going on right here, bacon to get the grease going and some flavor. Got the eggs ready to mix. Gonna make them fluffy with the milk. Um, afterwards, we'll throw on the hash brown. So, overall dish, some classic, fluffy, delicious eggs. I overheard crispy hash browns are a good thing. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and uh, we got the classic smash and cover. Yeah, yep, that's it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Good luck, because it smells outstanding. And you know, one of these days, even with the inception of uh, Electric World, we might eventually create smell -a vision But until then, you just got to trust me on this. The ultimate cooking competition smells absolutely outstanding right now. We got Team Camping World, Team Good Sam, Team Overton's, and Team Gander. All for a chance to win a brand new Nepalo boat with the Ultimate Outdoor Olympics. All we got to do right now is just wait and when we come back, we'll see what these contestants have made so that our judge Ian can figure out who's going to win day four, the ultimate cooking competition. We'll be right back. Every chef knows that travel and food go hand in hand. If you want to try new recipes, find the best restaurants, and discover amazing cuisines, then make Camping World the first stop on your culinary adventure. If you can make it in a kitchen, on a grill, or over a fire, then you can make it anywhere with your RV. Take your kitchen on the road with Camping World. And welcome back to the Ultimate Outdoor Olympics. What's up? It's Chris Young here with the Ultimate 
cooking competition. Who's going to win the Napalo boat? And welcome back Who's to going to win the chance to give away the Napalo boat? We don't know. But day number four, all I know is I am dying because my brother Ian Baker gets to taste all this food, and I get to sit here once again and watch him enjoy it. So I'm going to bring Ian in because it's time to pick a winner. Ian, you got a tough decision ahead of you, man. Oh, buddy, this is yeah. my favorite part. I, well, I know I it is. For this. And once again, why am I good? I, I can't even... Oh, I don't even get a bite. So here's what we're going to do. All right, buddy. Let's go campsite to campsite. Okay. I'll take your mic so you can eat, and then I'll just hold it in front of you, and you tell me what you think. And then okay. we'll come back here, give you a chance to think about it, okay. and you pick a winner. How about that? Yeah, that works. Okay, because we're going to do four, three, two, and one. Okay. We're going to do 4,000 points again, okay. 3,000 points for second place. Sure. Third place will get two, okay. and last place will get 1,000 points. Chris, I just want to get food in my mouth. Let's do it. All right, let's go <laughs> check out. You know what? Follow your detours right here behind us. Team Gander. Ready. All right. Come on, guys. You can hold that. I got you, man. I am a hot sauce person. All right. All right. Like so, so, Dan, tell me real quick, what'd you make? So, we made um, breakfast tacos. We got a base of cheese, and then we got some hash browns with sauteed onions and peppers. Eggs, bacon, cheese, and obviously some hot sauce. Like crumbled in the eggs. Oh, bacon's crumbled in the eggs. That's a good looking breakfast taco, big dog. How are you thinking so far? <laughs> not bad. No, no. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> to Dan's credit, earlier comment. Hash browns could use a little more crisp. Not. Oh. It's okay. 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 Very good. You can't hey. Knock hey. It, no, no. Right Absolutely. There. Still very good. Thank you guys very much. No lip to the judge. I know. Okay, no lip to the judge. <laughs> 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 this smells delicious. All right, let's All right. go check out Soulful RV Family, Keith oh, and Tia. Oh, here we go. Team Overton's. Now, what do we got here, Keith? Well, we were going with an omelet, but like in football, sometimes you have to call an audible. Oh, yeah. So we decided to go with three, uh, three eggs, sunny side up. Representing land, water, and RB. The hash All right. with uh, onions, pepper, seasoning, and then bacon wrapped shrimp and regular shrimp. Oh my gosh. Woo, give me that microphone, boy. Look, look, I don't even know what's going to happen here, but I know it's going to be good. This is. Uh... Now, Tia, is this something that you guys make a lot? Well, I love shrimp. I used to love shrimp a lot more. Right. Um, so. The bacon, that's my husband's specialty. So we had to combine our talents. Okay. Yeah. All right. I see, uh, I haven't seen that look on your face in a while. <laughs> this is a... <laughs> Okay. All right. So, 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 tell me about everything you, you're, you're feeling right now, because you look like you're in a zone. The the shrimp made with the bacon, perfectly cooked. Uh, the right amount of seasoning. The hash browns are killer. I don't know who did the hash browns, but excellent work. Very good. Right on. Very, very good. Do you do you need a moment? I just one second. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the great thing about cooking on the campsite. You can do this just as easy with the stuff you can get from Camping World and Gander, especially with these little Blackstone, like these 17 inches. They're fantastic, easy to cook on, take it with you anywhere, and make just five star meals. Yeah, set that down. Okay, so overall thought on that one, what do you think? Amazing. I, I do need a napkin. I have some. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> The ultimate yeah, messy campsite. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That is right. <laughs> All right. Two traveling dogs. Sir, please yes. ride this way. Oh. Team Good Sam. Oh, you're going to get buttered up here. Oh, this is beautiful. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Ah, might I say, the smell of your cologne reminds me of hot dog water and insect repellent. Perfect. That's very nice. Because that is my man musk. Yes. <laughs> Nate and Rachel, so we made the bird's nest. Here, you take that and tell me what you did. So I think we all remember breakfast as a kid. That's my great memories is going to um, breakfast with my parents and we got toad in a hole like I told you. But this right. is a bird's nest. So we have a blue plate so it looks like the sky. We have the vegan sausage, um, which is Ooh. in the ground. We have the um, grilled jalapenos, which is the grass. And then we have the pretzels, which are the nest with the hash browns as the nest as well. Right, 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 right. Um, oh, wait, the pretzels are the branches and the okay. hash browns are the nest and then the eggs in the middle. So he's... <laughs> he is literally eating nature right now is what you're saying. Yes. I love it. All right, so Ian, I, I, I mean, you didn't even stop to breathe, man. Yeah. Once again, never eat, ate a lot of vegan food in my past, but you guys, if, if this is how all vegan food is, I'm in. You guys do okay. an amazing job. It has the right amount of heat, the, the hash browns, the egg, everything blended together perfectly. 
Very creative styling. Great plating. I love it. It's all her. It's all her. Oh, that's beautiful. But, sir, we will see you back next week. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> see, and once again, this competition is all for one of our contestants to give away the brand new Napalo boat. So not only do you have a big pallet, you got a big weight on your shoulders to figure out <laughs> exactly what that is. Is that sparking joy? There it is. is? That, is that is a beautiful smiley <laughs> face. The nose. I mean, I, I know I know I have a big Hawaiian nose. <laughs> yes. That Kevin, is, are we that getting this? <laughs> what we call the classic happy camper. So this is the okay. meal, the classic meal that every camper has, and they're happy about it. All right. I love it. The nose is only bigger because we knew you loved hash browns. So that's <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Okay. All right. So so tell me what all is in it. We got, so we got the bell paper. Sorry, the, our secret ingredient, other than milk, though, is that we love bacon grease. We think it makes everything taste better. So we do got bacon grease in there. We know he likes a little spice. We did put a little bit of jalapenos um, chopped up in the hash brown. But we didn't put in the eggs because we wanted to keep, you know, keep it. Keep a, keep a flavor. Yeah, keep that flavor profile separate. Yep. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it, it's definitely cheesy. It looks good. And then, Bryce, who made what? Um, Nelly. <laughs> No, so I did the bacon. I was on the bacon. Uh, I started on a few things, and then Nelly came in and repaired it all. Okay. All right. All right. So, big dog. Um, guys, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's outstanding. Tell me, what do you think? Yeah, no, very, very good. Eggs were a little bit runny, uh, but overall, fantastic. It was it was cooked very well. The hash browns were great. The, the jalapeno was a nice touch. The perfect amount of heat. Not too much, but it was there. That's beautiful. All right. All right, so you got a tough decision. Do you think you can make one based off of that? Do you, do you need a second, or are you good? You know, Chris, I think I'm good, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, right off the top, I will tell you the best dish, Keith and Tia. You guys. Hey! Hey! hey. That was Woo. Okay. amazing. Everything okay. Everything from start to finish. Took it. I mean, knocked it right out of the park. Right on. Um, in second... Two traveling dogs. Oh, 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 look at that. Wow. That's a reaction to send home to mama. Okay. Yes. And, and yeah. this, this is where it gets hard, right? Like, yeah. The first one, like everyone's happy, right? Right, right, right. Uh, now now yeah. we're getting into the last two. Um, Wait, but you know, nothing, no meal made here was. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they were all good. All no amazing. meal made, yeah, had nothing bad absolutely, about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Everything was fantastic. Right. Um, in third place, it's going to be the Jergies. Oh, okay. All right. Excellent. All right. You guys, again, Yeah. very well done. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> right? You should be. It, it was good. And then I guess our friends over here follow your detour. Absolutely. But you know what? You still get 1,000 points. So let's see. If, if my math is correct, that means we have the Jergies at 8,000 points okay. going into the last day of competition. Is this 4,000 plus 4,000? Uh, well, yeah, well, no, because they got... Four, two. Four. They, they were at six. Okay, yes. And they came in third, so they got yes. two more. Okay, so yes. they got... Okay. They're now, they now have 8,000 points. Yes. And, you know, once again, math is my strong suit. Um, <laughs> two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? All right, at 7,000 points, uh-huh. we got two traveling dogs. Mm-hmm. Woo! At 6,000 points, we got follow your detour. And 5,000 points, Soulful RV Family. That is a tight competition going into day four. We, but we, uh, we might want to get to going. You know, this is one of the great things about uh, yeah, this, my friend. It's, it's, I, I think it's going to rain. You know, and the fact that we're holding two lightning rods right now means one thing. <laughs> the competition is going to be picked up back tomorrow. Ian and I and the rest of us are going to get the heck out of here and get under some shade. You have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow with more of the Ultimate Land, Water, and RV Show. Bye. Woo.